Terry Casper Bauer. And you know what? It's hard to believe it's football season already, Terry. It doesn't feel like it in here, does it? <laughs> Pl <laughs> plenty warm here. What a beautiful new home we have up here yeah. in the broadcast booth in Canton. Quite a view, quite a view, isn't it? And uh, nice big scoreboard and uh, brand new field. A lot of a lot of bleachers between the two sides. You can fit about 3,000 people in here and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great night, and you know what? It's already benefited because with all the rain we've had this week, chances are that freshman game tonight may not have been, been played because they wanted to save it for the varsity game. Well, and you look at that uh, shower we had even just today, I mean, coming yep. in and, and kind of messing things up, but the field looks great. Uh, a lot of fans have piled in. Everybody's just looking at the new stadium and everything that it has <laughs> to uh, bring here at the Carroll Athletic Field. And, you know, a as you walk around, you, you just see everything going. And I know uh, not just for us did the foot base or football season come up quick, but uh, for the contractors here. I mean, I've seen, <laughs> yeah. them, I've seen them working late on Saturdays. And, of course, the weather didn't help them very much, but they did a great job getting it ready so we could open up the football season. And, and they're not done. It, there's obviously they know there's more work to be done. And, uh, you know, the, the unique thing about here in Carroll is a lot of places that they put these fields, there's only one team using it, so they always have a, at least a one-week break, sometimes a two-week break. Well, with Carroll and Kemper sharing it and with the underclassmen games being played here, they really don't have a lot of days off uh, in between games to get uh, any last-minute work that they have to have done. Uh, obviously, the track isn't ready yet, but that doesn't need to be ready till next next March. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, been a long – since November seems like it was a long, long time ago, but it really uh, – it went fast, I'm sure, for them. Well, if you haven't uh, had time to get out here yet, make sure you make time to come check out the stadium. As Terry said, there's going to be a lot of Friday night football played on this field, and it is ready for it. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to blame my uh, bad uh, stat tracking on now because those hash marks look like they're in the perfect spot and not going <laughs> to move or get tore up, Terry. No, I, I don't. don't have no excuses now. <laughs> no excuses. Other than uh, Marilyn Peters edition class. That's still going to be out there. She didn't help me out much. So, <laughs> But we got a good one in store for us here this evening. The Carroll Tigers playing host to the Glenwood Rams. Do want to uh, remind you that coming up uh, in the post game, we'll announce tonight's motor in player of the game as uh, that's always a fun one. We'll have that coming up again after the game for you. And uh, so much more stuff. The stadium changed. A lot of different things going on. Uh, Kick 1067. I actually will have the scoreboard show uh, later this evening along with KCIM. So you'll be able to listen uh, that uh, a little bit further out than you have in the past. And, uh, boy, it's it's time to kick this season off. Yeah, it's, it's this is uh, going to be a challenge for the Tigers. Uh, I'm sure most people are predicting Glenn would win this, this game. And, uh Carroll's going to have a lot, a lot of new faces out on the field. They might be seniors, but they're going to be seniors that uh, haven't gotten any of, very little, if any, varsity. And we'll see a, a number of sophomores and, and juniors also. You know, with Glenwood, the one thing you can't count on is there is a little home pride uh, coming in, playing on a new field, yep. and wanting to make sure you hang the W up in front of a, a packed grandstand. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. When these fans get excited, we can't hear them in here, Terry. Like before, I had to stick my head out just to see the scoreboard. Yeah. And now we're sitting towards the north side of the uh, press box up here. Uh, the windows and everything don't really allow us to hear the fans, but I won't have to hang out the window to see the scoreboard here yeah. on the north side either. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's nice, nice and big. You're, you're right. You're not going to be able to we to miss the scoreboard. We can feel the stand, the stands when the kids are. We got the middle school kids right in front of us, and just to the right of them are the high school kids. So uh, a lot of stomping uh, on those aluminum bleachers. We'll be able to feel it up here. So it looks like they're getting ready to introduce the uh, starting lineups out on the field. Did you happen to catch the uh, coin flip? I no, was too I busy staring at everything else. Yeah, I, w I was watching. They had the captains over on the far side on the 50-yard line, and, and uh, I never did see the, the official make a, s a sign. looks like we're, we're introducing our starting offense. I don't know if that means uh, we're going to get the ball first or not, but uh, usually that's what happens. Well, that's what we'll do. We'll take a look at the starting offense for the Carroll Tigers in this evening's season opener. Across the front at left tackle, wearing number 66, the six foot one, 280 pound senior, Josh Loft. At, le at left guard, it's Chase Gladden, the 6'3", 255 pound junior. Center will be Tucker Hinners, a 6'1", 290 pound junior. 
You've got Marcus Lee at right tackle, six foot two twenty senior, and Nathan Hoffman, the six three two hundred and fifteen pound senior. Those are the guys going to do the work up front. Split ends tonight. Tory Feldman, a six foot one one forty four sophomore, out on the left side. Then you've got Jang Jicklo, the six foot two one sixty senior, also playing split end for the Carroll Tigers. Quarterback for tonight will be Colby Vincent. The 6'3", 190-pound junior doesn't have a, a lot of work at the uh, varsity level. I believe it was uh, two, or two, three two for two for three. Yeah, two out of three for four yards last year is all he had. So, uh, so he's going to look to expand on those stats a little <laughs> bit, I think. Yeah, and he'll be sharing that. We'll see. Slade Siebenauer is going to get some time in at quarterback also tonight. And then uh, behind him, we'll see. Uh, well, we've got the slot backs, Jace Pettit, a 5'9", 145-pound senior, and Isaac Smith, a 5'10", 185-pound senior at the slot back. And, and Terry, you said we'll expect to see at the uh, fullback here. Yep. yep, there he is right He's there. ready for it, yep. huh? Yep. So I, I'm glad you did the yeah. research, you know, <laughs> knew what was coming. But running through the tunnel of Tigers out there, number 30, Ryan Johnston, the 6'185", pound sophomore, Probably going to get a little bit more of a workload than was expected earlier in the week here tonight. Yeah, yeah, and Ryan's a younger brother of Nathan, played a few years ago. Uh, he's going to be a good one, but obviously as a sophomore, this is his first uh, first shot at varsity, so uh, we'll see how uh, how he handles that, that first start tonight. Well, the Tigers put out a lot of different guys when it comes to uh, offense all the way across the board. You know, there's just a couple of these names that pop out. That, uh, that made an impact and did some playing last year. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, how they grow. And, uh, you know, the first first night, there's always the jitters, you know. Oh, yeah. Whether it's making sure the scoreboard works like the Dactronics guys are over there. Or, you know, we've got Tiger Vision uh, working on cameras. And, I mean, they got, they got more computers down there than most <laughs> office places <laughs> yeah. in Carroll. Yeah, it's all high school kids running that, so uh, – you know that's what those young people they they've learned a, they learned a lot they've grown up with that all that technology and what I understand is they went down to Iowa State and kind of went some through some training was what it was supposed to be and by the time they left a couple of those Iowa State professors had uh, or whoever was putting it on asked some of our kids if they would come back and help them out so uh, obviously we got some talented kids running this. Well, it'll be great to see and uh, on right one now. of them I think they're gonna. will receive make notes of all of this also we've got of course broadcast all around this Friday evening uh, Jeff Blankman uh, is doing the Carroll at Ballard game uh, that's next week well why'd he give me this one <laughs> I don't know but you know, that'd be kind of tough for him to be at Ballard right now if, uh, <laughs> that's a and <laughs> sent me out with the wrong iPad <laughs> what kind of <laughs> I think Jeff's doing the Nick Brinks took the trip down to St. Albert. Oh, what do you do? It's opening night. We'll That's get it right. figured out. You know, I figured it's, it's my 12th <laughs> opening night of a football season. Seven of them here in Carroll with the broadcasting station somewhere. You think I'd figure out how this works. Well, after 12 more, you'll, be, you'll have it down pat. <laughs> we'll keep working on it. But it'll be the Tigers kicking off to the Rams to open things up here. And uh, actually, to start things off earlier, what a win for the Tigers. Took down the Rams 41-6 to in that first game. And feel the shake there, Terry. <laughs> yeah. As long as it stays below us and <laughs> <laughs> we don't come up and coming down. But uh, Max New, returning kicker here, has spent a lot of time over the summer going to kicking camps, it sounds like. So we'll see if it's, uh, if it's paid off for him. They'll try to put it deep. And it looks like they're ready. The fans are stopping, and it's kickoff for the Carroll Tiger football season. This ball is going to be fielded at the five, working to the left side is Palmer, and he's going to be brought down hard around the 11-yard line. Is that 40? Yeah, Coffrin. Yeah, coming in to make Brennan the Coffrin tackle. And, and, and uh, Jacob Roiling, Ro Roiland was the first guy that got in there to slow him down, but the Brennan Coffrin right there to clean things up. So let's uh, talk defense now all of a sudden. Up front, you've got Nate Reiling and Chase Gladden at your defensive tackle spots. Mason 
Hewton and Parker Clucky at defensive end. In the middle, Marcus Lee and Brennan Coffin. And then you've got Tyler Tuning and Luke Woolsey as your outside linebackers. Cornerbacks are Colby Christensen and Jang Jicklow. And Tori Feldman will be your free safety. It'll be first and 10 from the 12 as Glenward works to the south. A little trickery to start things off. Come set, try to run it straight up the middle, and they'll pick up three on that one as they just hand it off to their fullback. Diving forward was Silvis. That was quite, quite the setup to come out with three linemen, get up on the line, and everybody else is just stacked behind them. So you don't know which way, uh, if you're trying to determine a strong side based on personnel, you're not going to be able to have time to, to keep moving around. So we'll see how they do it at this time. This time they have the, the stack thing. thing and, uh, Everybody goes to their side, heavy side, right side. There was a flinch yeah. there. There's a late flag. It just but, took them a while to find it. But a tackle for loss. Great job getting across the line by Marcus Lee. But the, the uh, outside split end there, I believe, was the one doing a little extra yeah, and, jumping. Unless they called it dead, we'll have to decline that one because it was a good three or four yard loss. Well, and it should have been uh, before the play there, so we'll see. So, Coach uh, did ask to. Prior to the snap, false. Prior to the snap. <laughs> It'll be third down then. Yep. So, so let's decline the penalty and it's a loss of one. And holy smokes, does this thing shake? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> this one uh, was designed for that. Uh, I hope so. So we, you think we'd see our first pass of the of the season right here? From the right hash, heading towards the north end zone. Glenwood comes set. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Looked like the receiver left early. They're not going to call. Chase Glad. There's going to be a great job <laughs> getting into the backfield and a sack for the Tigers. Yeah, that's and Gladden. What Chase. a job by Gladden chasing down Carr. That's going to be a loss of six on the play. Yeah, and Ch Chase, Chase is by far uh, our best returning player, two-way lineman, offense, defense. And, you know, not like tonight, if I was to get a breather on one side or the other, but uh, he showed his athleticism there, got through and chased down the quarterback fairly easily. Pettit and Jicklo stand inside the 50. As getting ready to kick this one off, looks like Zach Chase from his own end zone. It bounces into Chase's hands. He got a nice skip. It's a high, good spiral kick. And now it's going to take a bounce, and that is going to roll across the 50. But saw Jicklo waving everybody off, trying to clear it out. Yep. And it looks like the Tigers will start on the 46-yard line. Make that the 47-yard line. Yeah, it's a good defensive stop for the Tigers, and that, that's that's going to have to carry us initially because we got Marcus Lee and Brendan Coffin returning linebackers, and Chase Gladden up front. And uh, offensively, we just uh, Chase Gladden's basically our our only returning starter on the offensive side. So they come set, put a man in motion to the right side. They'll hand it off to him, trying to find the seam, no place to go for Isaac Smith. Got a flag on the far side. Think somebody moved for us. We'll wait and see what the uh, flag is for. It looks like an illegal shift. shift. It looks like they're trying to figure out if they're going to take a loss of two or move them back five. And they're going to decline it and take the loss of two. On the play, we have an illegal shift. Offense number three. That penalty is declined. We'll go to second down. So there's the call for you. So both teams racking up a couple penalties, but they've been declined so far. It'll be second and 12 from the right hash mark. Two receivers to the left, two tight to the right. One man in motion, they'll drop back. He throws it out and just led too far, but we got another flag on the play. Yeah, the same official throw it, <clears throat> threw it down over there. Wait to see what this one is. Motion. It's not getting our timing down, so are they going to take the penalty this time? Decided nope. to decline it again. On the play, we have an illegal formation. Offense number eight. That penalty is declined. We'll go to third down. So there you go, third down. 
as it was an incomplete pass by Vincent. And we'll set up third and 12. Vincent has one man to his left side. That's Johnson. He'll put a man in motion. He fumbles it a little bit. Sees the seam open. We got another flag on the yeah, play. Same, same official right in front of the Glenwood. Holy smokes. Glenwood Six bench. plays, seven <laughs> plays, four, four flags. flags. It's going to be a long night. Yeah. Yeah. Against us again. Oh, and now um, we got another flag. Yep. Yeah. Somebody must have said something. So now we're going to have a discussion here. We got so I would say Glenwood will decline the first penalty, and then the second one will be a dead ball penalty, so we'll have to get 15 yards. Dead ball foul on number eight. Unsportsmanlike conduct. 15-yard penalty. Fourth down. That illegal formation is declined. The illegal formation declined. Fourth down. So that's going to move it back. The ball's going to be set inside the 35 yard line on the Tigers' side of the 50. So it looked to be a good, you know, if you had a kick from there, you could pin them back. Now yep. it's going to be up to a, a real good kick and bounce probably to get. Get a uh, pin back. We'll I have think, to wait uh, and see. Ty, it looks like Ty Nissen's getting the start tonight. It was, I know it came down to him and Isaac Smith, and Ty's a sophomore. And I was out of practice there tonight. He really had some good punts. Well, he'll step into this one, let it go, end over end kick. Going to hit, bounce, and that's going to keep going. Rolls down, and just inside the 15 yard line. So wow. not a bad kick. No. Yeah. No, we'll take that. Get a little help from the home turf there, bouncing it around. 9.40 to play here in the first quarter. We're scoreless as both teams have had one possession. Tom Hawkamp along with Terry Casper Bauer. Glad to have you with us here this evening. Remember, uh, coming up at halftime, it's the Roselle Mutual Insurance Halftime Show. So we'll have all that information brought to you by the great sponsors. And as you hear the uh, ball game throughout the evening, we thank all the sponsors that make high school football possible. They'll line up behind each other, sprint to their spots, now turn. Now it's an option play. Kick out left side to Carter. We got another flag, though. Same official. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. He's going to have a sore arm. That's four in a row. He's, he's going to wear that thing out. <laughs> it should be interesting to see because uh, it doesn't look, you know, the whole coming up to the line and getting set. There are yeah. some guys that yeah. aren't there when the ball's getting set. Yeah. It's, so it's, that's uh, where this illegal shift's coming from, I believe. And it's it's brand new. They didn't they didn't do this last year, so it's all new for them. And looks like this one is going on the play. We have an illegal shift on the offense, number 16. Second down. First down. Little alien sound there for <laughs> you. We'll, we'll work on that. So I don't understand this. I don't think in high school officials are supposed to identify who the penalty's on. I know in college and pros you do, but this guy's been he's been. He's just been tagging everybody <laughs> yeah. tonight. So they'll all come set again. Under center, hand off to the first man through. He's hit right away. Not much room there for Silva. So he drove back. And they're going to mark him out to the 11. That's going to be a gain of one for Silva, who has the only positive yards on both sides of the ball so far. He's got four. Say this is a defensive uh, battle is an understatement because it's, it's uh, negative yards for total offense here. Scoreboard flashing up some of the defensive guys, their names, numbers, their positions here so far. That'll be second and 14. Ball on the right hash mark. All the linemen line up, split to their side. The quarterback, last one up, goes under center, pitches it to the left side. And he's quickly wrapped up and pulled down as shooty. He's going to battle for about a yard, though. He's going to break even on the night. And now we've got a... Whistle and trying to stop the clock. Officials calling the timeout for something. Somebody lose. Uh, Somebody bleeding. So, so from what, what, am I, what I understand this year is if you run a play with uh, illegal equipment, like if you get to put your mouth guard in or something, uh, you have to come out of play. Oh, uh, this one, this one is uh, who is that number? Can't see. Seventy-eight, maybe. 70, maybe it's, Nate, it's Ryland. Nate Ryland. Yep. Yeah, it's Nate He's Ryland. got a big cut on his left side of his leg going to get picked. Defense is stopping inside the stadium. And 
Here's a spinning run by Carr. He'll be pulled down at the 15. Back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth and 10. Yeah, just, you know, both teams bring very conservative, brand new quarterbacks, juniors that didn't, didn't hardly play at all last year at, at the quarterback position. So, uh, you know, not you don't want to turn the ball over this early in the game. So they're just content on keeping possession of the ball and then count on your punter to get you out of trouble and have your defense stop them uh, and get the ball back again. Pettit and Jicklo back deep, ready to punt this off as Zach Chase. Stands just outside his own end zone. Bobbles it a little bit, and it's going to be blocked, and he's hit. The ball is down inside the five. Couldn't get it off as the Tigers kept converging, and two bad snaps. He got the first one off because it took a good hop to him. This one, though, turnover. Going to be brought in at the four-yard line, and what a chance for the Carroll Tigers. Yeah, and it's actually number 18, Alex Nusser, who kicked for them last year, too. Just dropped that snap, and then looked like Ryan, or not Ryan, yeah, Ryan Johnston and uh, Brendan Coffin were all over, all over him, and he had no chance to get that off. So it'll be first and goal from the four for the Tigers, heading towards DMAC on the north side of the field. Colby Vincent in the shotgun. He'll put a man in motion. That's Isaac Smith. Hand off to Johnston. Johnston, what's the right sign? Can he get there? He's there. Touchdown. Touchdown, Tigers. Tigers take the block punt, turn it into points on a four-yard Johnston TD run. Yeah, that's just regular, just a dive play. Johnston bounced it out to the outside and good, good enough speed to outrun the, the Glenwood outside linebacker and first score of the, of the year. So the Tigers able to capitalize, get some points. Looks like uh, might see a little swing and gate action, move it around a bit. Now they'll set it all up. New, looks like Jicklow holding on the 10. New steps back. Calls for it, snaps high, balls down. New puts it through the uprights, Tigers lead. 7-0, 7.43 to play here in the first as the Tigers able to strike first. Back after this, you're listening to 1380 KCIM. What's that mean? What's that mean? This is not just funny. it's playing the sponsor break. Oh, it is playing. There are sponsors. Yeah, talk they're about. playing here. Yeah. Okay. I but can hear them. So. I didn't know it says non-sponsored, so I didn't know if yeah. they were just playing something that's. Well, it's because I picked the one-minute break. It doesn't pull off the sponsor list. Oh, okay. A, gotcha. Like if this was not a Carol. Here's New putting the boot into it again. It'll be taken at the five-yard line. Looking for room to run is Palmer. He's over to the left side, out past the 20 to the 25. He'll be pushed down a bounce just shy of the 30. A nice return there by Glenwood as they set it up. Wanted to return it left in front of their own bench and were able to do so. And this will be their best starting field position of the evening. Yeah, by, by far. We kept them back underneath in their, uh, in their end of the end zone, so... So they huddle up, talk things over. Trying to get a score sent out to the other broadcasters here quick. Here's a handoff, first man through, and he's nice. gonna bust open. He's got an opening, he's out into the middle, trying to find his room is Silvis, and he's gonna be brought down at the 51 yard line, a 20 yard gain right up the middle. And once you get past the first group in this three, five look, yeah. there's not much there for help, yep. but they were able to run him down. Yeah. We had, we had made some uh, defensive change there just for one play, and <clears throat> it hurt us. So hopefully now we get that. That's, that's a play that the coaches have been worried about going to practice there tonight, just that straight head veer. Ball on the 50, wing back formation. They'll hand off to the first man through again. 
And this time it was Shooty, and he's going to be dropped after a pickup of a three. Just piling straight through the middle. We'll see how long it takes for him to decide to, to pack that in. And we'll see a switch here. Chase Gladden coming back out. He's going to relieve uh, Jeklo here. I believe that. That's Isaiah Bating. Oh, Isaiah Bating. <laughs> yep. 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 Now another sprint to the line. Hand off to the left side. Trying to just play power football. How long till the... Tigers just pile in the middle and see if they can't run around them. Well, I know the, the game plan was to do the best job possible to prevent Glenwood from running inside, make them bounce to the outside. Uh, coaches felt like uh, our speed on the outside was better than their running back speed. So uh, up front, is, is they've they got pretty good-sized offensive linemen. That's what the, uh, they were worried about, they just being able to control us up front. Third and two from the... 42, another handoff up the middle, and that's going to be a three-yard gain and a first down for Glenwood. It's hard to see, but popping up off the bottom of the pile is Shooty, the running back for Glidden, and a whole pile of Tigers in on the tackle. Yeah, we got Carter Venami, who's a, a big 6'4". It says 280 on the program. I think he's a little closer to 300 pounds. Just a sophomore. Um, Coach Rowetter, the defensive coordinator, was, was hoping that he could provide him some good size and strength in there this year. So Glenn Weddle sprint, snap it quickly. They faked the handoff. It looked like it was going to be a quick slant, but the quarterback kept it as the defense was there, and Chase will lose a yard as uh, getting in on the uh, tackle is Marcus Lee. He's been all over the field here early. Yeah, and last year, third game of the year, we were playing Glenwood here, and Marcus Lee was having a great game. He he had 10 tackles for the night, but uh, he was lost for the season about halfway through the third quarter of that game. And, uh, he, he was playing really good football at the time. You know, you don't have to bring up the bad memories. No, Let's I know. Let's just stick it's to good. the good stuff, all right? Okay. <laughs> Here's Glenwood. That looked like a false start on the left tackle, but he's going to get called. The ball comes out, and it looks like the Carroll Tigers have it, and they do. It is another turnover. A blocked punt and a fumble has taken the ball away from Glenwood so far tonight. I think that might have been Tyler Tuning getting in on that fumble recovery. Not sure. Well, uh, the running back was just plugging away, trying to go, and you saw a hand reach in and just pull the, yep. the nose of that ball right up and out, and there it went rolling. So the Tigers have the ball on the 36-yard line, headed towards the north there in zone. It'll be first and 10. Looks like Baiting will go wide right. On the left side's Pettit. One man in the backfield looks to be Johnston. Here's Smith in motion, left to right across the formation. They'll take the snap, throw it out to Johnston. He's hit hard, and he'll lose three yards on this pitch play to the right side. Yeah, that was Silas Bales uh, all over Johnston that time. He didn't get fa fooled at all on the fake dive and option play or uh, and Kobe had to pitch the ball. Defensive end took him, and Silas Bales did a good job, came up and made the tackle on Johnson for a two-yard loss. You can see Glenwood just daring the Tigers to put the ball in the air yeah. right now. Yeah, we're going to have to. I mean, they're piling in right now, and they yeah. want to see if he's willing to try to throw it. Here's Carter in motion to the right side, a handoff up the middle to Johnston. He's going to pile forward and not get back to the line of scrimmage. The, right now, the uh, Glenwood defensive line is getting a big push as they're setting the Tigers back a yard or two right on the snap. Yeah, and all, like I said, other than Gladden, we've got all new offensive linemen in there, and so uh, Glenwood's got uh, some, some returning defenders that uh, really had good, good seasons last year, and Glenwood made it to the playoffs with an 8-1 and one record. Here's Vincent dropping back, couldn't see anybody. Tries to run for it, he'll be brought down for a loss of a yard as he dove forward on the quarterback sack. So the Tigers unable to do anything with the turnover and now they'll try to punt it away. Saw Vincent drop back, just couldn't find anybody. Nope. 3.38 to play here in the first. Tigers lead seven nothing, it's Friday night football. On 1380 KCIM. High snap, crowd. It's an end over end boot. Going to be brought in at the 38 yard line. 
trying to find some room. He just keeps backing up, sets up his block, and then he's going to be brought down at the 42-yard line. Ran about 20 yards to gain two. Yeah, Luke Woosley put, put a wrestling move on him and put flattened him on his back. Wasn't going to let him get anywhere there, so... An exciting night here as we opened up the Carolina Athletic Field. Scoreboard shining bright with that 7-0 lead right now for the Tigers. 3-13 to play. Has this been but, a long quarter or is it just me? Well, the those flags on the first <laughs> yeah. first two drives must have really slowed it down because there hasn't been a lot of passes. So, maybe it was so college. Maybe it's a college clock. Yeah, that's what it is. So Glenwood lines up. Everybody's gonna sw sprint to their sides. Again, oh, it doesn't look like open. people got set, but a big open hole. And there's, uh, I believe that's Carter. Jicklo saving the tackle as Carter sprints out to the 30-yard line. Yeah, Carter returning running back from a year ago who had over 100 yards against Carroll here and for the season had close to 1,000 yards and didn't get the start on offense. But uh, I, I would say the way they struggled on the first few drives that he's probably going to see the field a lot now. So the Tigers look like almost not prepared, but... It's interesting because if you watch some of these linemen, they don't, I don't know that they know where they're going. Here's a quick handoff again to Carter. He's hit hard in the pile. It looked like maybe the handoff wasn't clean and Carter had to turn around and grab it, but he does pick up a yard on the play. At that time, uh, we had a lot of guys diving inside on him, and I th think your focus has to be on stopping him. And, and then uh, the guys, uh, outside backers and defensive backs, uh, Got to be able to take care of uh, option and and passes. 90% of the plays so far for Glenwood has went right up the middle. 2.22 to play. They'll line it up. Everybody sprints coming up under center. Here's another handoff. Carter right side. They like the right side so far, and they're going to pick up another six here. That'll bring up third and two. And right now Chase Gladden's getting the breather, and, and that uh, seems like when, when we aren't able to have him out there defensively. Uh, we, we struggle to, to, to bottle up that running game. Looks like the Tigers going to bring in Nathan Ryling again to help out in the middle. So it'll be third and three as the make some noise on the scoreboard goes and the student section obeys. Fumble Here's again. Here's a handoff. The ball's on the ground and the Tigers have it again, they say. <sighs> yep. And they do. Yeah. Look like coming up uh, late off of the pile there again, <laughs> number 50, Marcus Lee. I don't know if he had the recovery, but. He was the last one up, wasn't he? Yeah, so, so a blocked punt, a fumble, and a fumble. Not the way uh, Glenwood saw no. their uh, season starting and, and that's, off. And that's the, when you run the veer, that's a chance you take. Uh, a lot of times the uh, quarterback is reading and the, doesn't get the ball, like you said before, look like he had a hard time getting the ball into the running back's belly, and that time you could see it on the hip. And Ball on the 22 for the Tigers, and we've already got a flag. Somebody's lined up off sides. That didn't take long. No. Tigers will get five yards out of this one. So we'll wait and see here what they decide to do. Offside. Defense number 38. Still first down. Getting all the uh, kinks worked out of everything we get now. We yeah. got a lot of new toys up here. That's too, right. So. This is all new. So now it'll be first and five as we see another penalty called on Glenwood. Man in motion, left to right. They'll fake it to him. And Vincent kept it. He's going to throw on the run. He's got a man open in the middle. He found his man, and he'll be wrestled down at the 45. Looked like that was Isaac, Isaac Smith. Smith snuck out. Yep, yep, what snuck a out of the back there. Field. Yep, just a little waggle play, they call that. Fake fake a, fake a sweep, fake a die or a trap, and quarterback bootleg out. And uh, it wasn't a pretty pass. And Vincent was getting, oh, it's the Siebenhauer's in there now. Slade Siebenhauer's quarterback. And, but uh, he was able to keep his eyes downfield and hit, uh, hit Smith on about a, Eight, nine-yard pass, and the Smith ran another. Yeah, 28-yard gain on the play for Siebenhauer. So he stands at the 50. Ball's marked on the 45. They'll put a man in motion left to right. Heavy now to the right side. Siebenhauer wants to run the option. He's going to keep it. Lowers his head. He's to the 40. That's a nice five-yard pickup. And that is the... Uh, 
That is the biggest gain on the ground for the Tigers here tonight. Yeah, Slade just a sophomore, but he's had a lot of varsity experience, been a two-year starter in baseball. Um, he played uh, freshman football, obviously, last year. The team that only had one loss, and that was on a, on a missed two-point conversion. But uh, you can see he's, he's got some size to him, and, and he, knows, he knows the game. And uh, you know, it's nice to have two quarterbacks like him and Vincent. That'll be second and five from the 40 for the Tigers. They're in Glenwood territory. Stephen Aller drops back, throws oh, the quick oh. flying out, and it is picked up, yeah. going the other way. Working his way down the field is Bales. He's got open field in front of him. 10-5, touchdown, Glenwood. Yeah. Just when you have some good things to do, say, as a sophomore making his first appearance at varsity level, that happens. Trying to hit the back on an out route. And Bales read it and timed it just perfect. If you're going to miss on that pass, you better miss high and out, low and outside because uh, it's too easy to get that. If you pick it off there, it's, it's usually a pick six. Yeah, that one will go back. It's one of those where it just wasn't quite uh, where it needed to be. It was kind of behind the receiver, and now they'll set up for the PAT. Snap is good. Kick is up and good, and we are tied up here at the Carroll Athletic Stadium. Carroll Tigers taking on the Rams of Glenwood. Knotted up 7-0 on 1380 KCIM. the board 18 seconds remaining here in the first quarter and it's 7-7 Tigers versus Rams yeah looking at the Tiger sideline you really got some guys that are tired that are playing both ways it's a warm humid night down there uh, get kind of demoralized so we got to find out we got to get some guys who are leaders mental toughness here and get the guys uh, fired up and put that last play behind us here's a high end over end kick That'll be taken at the 35, and he tried to call for a fair catch. And <laughs> I don't know if no, nobody saw it. He was waving <laughs> like he just wanted to catch it, but I... I don't think he waved enough. Uh, he, just he, <laughs> he just wanted to make sure he caught the ball. That That's was, all he wanted to do. That was Kate Chabel, sophomore, and I'm sure he's been told, you know, you get a high kick, you want to... Fair catch it, give fair yourself catch a it, but I, I don't know if he got that arm up enough to call well, that He was fair waving catch. both of them. I saw uh, it. Okay. Unless his mom was walking by and it was an <laughs> yeah. accident. But. So 17 seconds going. Ball on the 36-yard uh, line here in the first quarter. Kobe. Tied up, 7 all. Kobe Vincent's back in at quarterback. Vincent stands back there behind him. It's Johnston to the left. You've got Smith. Smith goes in motion. Glenwood just ten. realized they were missing somebody. Yeah, they only had 10 players, and, and somebody was smart out. enough, yep. Timeout, Glenwood. They're first. So, with that timeout, we'll take one, two. Back after this on 1380 KCIM. the Carroll Athletic Stadium. I do want to remind you, coming up in the post game, we'll be announcing tonight's Motor Inn Player of the Game. Motor Inn of Carroll, your Toyota, Chevy, and Buick dealership for sales, service, parts, and collision. Look for pictures of the Motor Inn Player of the Game on the radio station social media sites later tonight. 
First and 10, ball on the 36-yard line. Vincent stands back, puts Smith in motion, fakes the handoff to Johnson, drops back, able to make one man miss. Now he gets spun around. He's going to be brought down at the 31-yard line, so a loss of five on the play for Vincent. And that should do it for quarter number one in the Bucks. <laughs> Felt like an overtime quarter there, <laughs> Terry. We'll be back after this word from our fine sponsors. You're listening to 1380 KCIM Carroll. Friday night from the Carroll Athletic Stadium as it will be a second and 15 for the Tigers as they will head towards the rec center in the uh, south side of things now. Yeah, we've got to figure a way. We've got to hit some quick passes because we're not getting a lot, enough time to. Well, right now, Glenwood has seven guys in the box. They're following Smith as he comes back, and now here's a handoff to Johnson, and he's got an opening, and he's going to dive forward. He's going to pick up about 12 on that run to the left side. Yep, it's a nice little <clears throat> counter play. The right guard is uh, Marcus Lee doing the pulling. Actually, that's probably Chase Gladden. That... You know what happens when you have something new and Pete Collison shows up? He's going to play with it. Yeah. He keeps <laughs> messing with the lights back here to see which way we should go with it for us. So. Here it is, third down and about five for the Tigers. They've got a flag Sorry. on the play. And Johnson trying to find the corner. He's going to dive for it. He's going to be close to the first down. Yard short. Probably about a foot short of it. But we'll have to wait. Our uh, friend on the far sideline has thrown that towel quite a bit here tonight. And he threw that one high. Yeah, it was I mean, way up there. It was at least two of the yard markers high when he let this one go. Hey, we got a flyover airplane up there, too. Everything tonight. Everybody wants to check out the new field. I think Glenwood will take this because it looks like if they don't, we're going to go for it on fourth down. But Wait for the official ruling. Oh. All right. We have an illegal formation on the offense. Number six, five-yard penalty. Still third down. You know, I wonder if they didn't change something, Terry, so we get to call out all the folks that uh, caused trouble on these yeah. plays. Yeah. Well, we're getting to learn a lot of numbers. That, uh... It's third down and nine. 11.08 to play here in the first half. 7-7, seven, seven, Rams and Tigers. Vincent stands in the shotgun. One man to his right side looks to be Johnston. Two receivers each way. He'll put a man in motion. Throws this one deep. He just lobs it up for Bading. Bading goes up against it nice and comes catch. down with it at the 35-yard line. He yeah. just jumped up and pulled that one out of the sky. Yeah, and he, Isaiah Bading's our returning, leading returning receiver. Only 10 catches last year, but that's more than anybody else had coming back. And the uh, first time we've targeted him and uh, saw his athleticism there, he just went up and over, looks like uh, Ryan Leith there, the safe uh, corner, play, had him man-to-man -man and, Made a nice grab and kept the keeps the drive alive. That ball didn't come out clean and just kind of floated. Otherwise, I think Bating could have ran down the sideline and, and had a good spot on it too. So three receivers set this time, left side. Smith cuts across. They're handed to Johnston, who just lowers his shoulder and gets two. Smith didn't make it across the formation as 
got caught up on one of the linemen, linemen trying yep. to come across there on the snap. Yep. Yeah, we do a, we do a lot of pulling and traps and power plays, and they have our athletic guards, Marcus Lee on the right side and Chase Gladden on the left, and asking them to do a lot of pulling and, and leading bl uh, ball carriers up the hole. Woosley and Bading to the right side. Looks like Feldman wide to the left. Smith in the slot back spot. Johnston into the deep back with Vincent. They'll do a counter. Nice cleanup block out there to open things up. Feldman couldn't get around his guy. Got close to it, but that'll be a pickup of seven. And clean. Marcus he, Lee. He, he's having a cleanup game out there because yeah. coming out and making that opening cut was Marcus Lee. Yeah, he just opened up that seam for that run. Yeah, just the power play with the Marcus Lee right guard pulling and kicking out the defensive end and leaving a big hole. Tigers nothing fancy. They don't huddle. They walk up to the line, get set, and here they come at you. It'll be third down and two from the 27. Ball on the left hash. Smith in motion left to right across the formation. Hand off to Johnson. It wasn't no, he no kept it. Winston kept it. Yep. Boy, it didn't it looked like a handoff the way they pulled jerseys on each other, yep. but Vincent kept it. Gets down to the eighteen yard line and a pickup of nine on the little trickery in the yep. backfield just, and just, the quarterback keeper. Yep, just the read play and he reads the <clears throat> defensive end on his left side and he crashes down and he pulls the ball back out and I'm we guessing a, there was a hanky out there we can't see right I, uh, now. Are you surprised? I, no, but I can't see it. <laughs> Well, we'll wait and find out what they're talking about anyways. Maybe they'll share it with us. No, they're keeping the ball there, so. No flag. He's going to picked up the flag. That time they just, just threw it for the sake of yeah, throwing a flag. Yeah, just so they could. They don't want to get out of <laughs> sync of uh, what it's like to throw that thing. You know, they got to get back into a rhythm, too, but. In that playbook, I sure wouldn't want to have to figure out the rule book for <laughs> Iowa high school football or any of them. I think Glenwood's taking a timeout. Glenwood wants to talk things over. The Tigers are threatening. 9-0-1 to play here in the first half. 7-7 on the board as the Tigers look to find a way into the end zone. Back after this on 1380 KCIM. Share a few scores coming in from around the area. The Kepper Knights lead St. Albert 15 to nothing. Uh, that one's at halftime, it looks like. Late in the second quarter, Atlantic 31, Sadell 6. Audubon on top of the reps on St. Mary's. That one late in the second, 19 to 6, Audubon leading. So we'll try to keep you up on some of these local scores as we go. Here throughout the uh, evening, of course, they'll hit halftime about now. We'll hit halftime in about another half hour the way the first quarter went. Vincent in the backfield. One man stands behind him this time. He's just going to fake the handoff, drops back, throws it out into the flat. Ooh. He threw it high, unable to go up and get that one. Was, was that Corbin? Corbin Lehman. Yep. It's hard to see with these jerseys. They didn't change those for us. Yeah, at all. the front the front's really hard. You gotta get to the yeah, see the twenty. Yep, yep, that's Corbin Lehman there. Couldn't bring in the pass that was blown just a little bit high. And had had pressure on him again. So Vincent one for three in throwing. Steven Aller one for two from the backfield. Here's a quick handoff. Johnson left side. He's gonna just lower his shoulder, take what he can get, and pick up three yards. So if you're the Tigers, you know right now you're thinking points. You've got a field goal kicker. You're within his range, but sure like to keep the drive going here on third down and eight. Yeah, and here, you know, you don't necessarily have to get eight, but if you can get five or six to get you a, a fourth and manageable uh, spot or a chance for a, a field goal attempt. Three receivers to the right. Johnston, the lone man. Next to Vincent in the background, or backfield, one man to the left. Oh. The ball rolls back to Vincent. He's just going to sit on it. Uh, not a good time for uh, one of those snaps. Yeah, but Vincent 
Didn't try to pick it up, just ate it up. Mm -hmm. And the ball now on the 21-yard line as that'll be a loss of four on the play. Thought maybe we'd see a, see a chance Max, at it. Yeah, it'd be a 37-yarder. I don't know if he's got a strong enough leg. The, the, earlier there was a little bit of a wind out of the south, so... Uh, Here's a yeah, screen, oh, and yeah. unable to catch that was Bading coming back across. They had it set up well, but looks as though Glenwood had a good good idea what was coming, too. And Tigers unable to capitalize, and will turn it over on downs. That's to be a decent drive going and um, bad snap and a couple incomplete passes. So now defense has got to step up again, and uh, you know, for the most part, they've done their job. Actually, you know, got two turnovers. Two fumble recoveries and uh, just got to be able to make sure we keep an eye on Carter. So Straight Glenwood puts three guys down. Everybody lines up behind him except for the wide receiver to the right. Now Carr splits up underneath, hands off to the left side this time as they try to just bowl forward. It's kind of like a rugby scrum every time <laughs> they hand off. And uh, diving forward this time was Silvis, and he's going to pick up five. Yeah, when you go 240, 270. 285, 250 up front, uh, offensive lineman-wise. Uh, you can take a chance just running in right behind those guys. Not a fan of all the emotion that has to go on to get the play ran, though. Oh. But here, Carter pops out in the open, and he is going to be cut down. A touchdown saving tackle by Torrey Feldman at the 38-yard line because there was nobody else to try to catch him in a 13-yard yeah. gain by Carter. Yep, and uh, you know, we're having to, having to call the defensive backs too many times and making touchdown saving tackles. So that means uh, the, the six guys up front in the middle uh, got to take start taking care of business on that. So there's five guys up on the line for the Tigers, three linebackers. Here they run the counter play, and this one's going to be no, it is a keeper that yep. time. Or just fit, he just fake it. Out to the 45 and a pickup of six. Yeah, just fake that sets the veer. You either hand it off or you fake it and pitch it or fake it and keep it. And that time he faked it and kept it and found the found a little bit of a, a gap in the defense. And somebody's somebody's always responsible for a quarterback on those plays. And what happens when you have those big plays in the running back? Those guys are responsible for the quarterback start cheating and think they're going to get in on the tackle on the running back, and then the quarterback gets uh, gets free. 6.21 to play here in the second quarter. Six, or it'll be second and four. And a dive forward again on the right side. This time they'll work a little bit off. They'll say he got five. I believe that's Carter popping up yep. off the bottom of the pile again. Got to find a way to slow that guy down. He's got 53 yards already on five carries here this evening. And their offense really s sputtered until uh, they brought him in to carry the ball and ever since he's been in their offense has found the other than turning it over they've really had success first and ten from midfield here's a handoff first man through they'll just dive for it and another pile up occurs three yards down the field can't even no. say a cloud of dust anymore yeah that's Silvis under that pile this time see a little rubber come up yeah, once in a while if it's a good tackle yep you know, you don't see as many of those uh, white bandages on the arms as I expected no, to see. No, no, they're getting better on that turf. Uh-oh, Carter with a stutter step, breaks open, and we've got a late flag on the play as he runs for 10 on the play, and it might be a face mask here the way his head jerk coming through, but we'll wait for the call. Oh, it looks like maybe a hold going back the other way. It looked like something yep, caught his hold. head coming up, but a nope. hold is going to be the call. It's a nice break for us. So it ends up being a five-yard On the run, we have a holding on the offense, number 99. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. Well, they caught Parker Sell on that one. Yeah, and he's a 245-pound he's a tight end, so basically another lineman in there. So Glenwood sprints to the line. Hands off to Carter on the left Ooh. side. What a job coming from behind to get the tackle. He is having one heck of a game here again this evening, and that's Marcus Lee. Yeah, he gets up slowly there, but yeah, that looked like uh, Carter had some room if it got out to the outside here, but Lee was able to cut him down. 
Well, when he, he made the tackle, and as he was doing it, the lineman was tackling him and came down hard on those ankles. Yep. He's a tough kid. Yeah, right back in there at that middle linebacker spot. Watch him run around. Now here's the handoff right side. This time, Silvis. He's going to get just enough for a first down as he rolls forward and picks up seven. Yeah, Glenwood's got their offense uh, going the running game just like they want their they're content just running the ball. If they don't have to put the ball in the air, they're fine with that. And two good running backs. Uh, and then the big horses up front open up holes for them. Tigers already got a lot of hands on hips and hands on knees. Carr back under center. Hands off to Carter. The blitzer comes right past Carter. Would have had a chance to cut him down in the backfield, but didn't see him. Carter will pick up two before he's rattled down. In by uh, Brennan Coffrin. Yeah, at that time Tyler Tuning stunned from his outside linebacker spot and took a gamble that the quarterback was going to keep at that time, so he ran right after Carr, and Carter ran by him. So to bring up second down and seven from the 36. Ball on the left hash. One man wide right. Everybody else sprints to their spot. Heavy formation nope. right side. Carter went the wrong spot. He'll come back. Filling in the backfield. They'll fake the handoff to him. Now give it to Silvis, but the Tigers were there and cut him down for no gain. Yeah, good. Yeah, we were what ready for job. that. Yeah, we were ready for that because we had everybody covered that time. If Carter had taken the pass or handoff, the, somebody was on him. Carr with the quarterback was covered. Parker Silvis Clucky on the counter. squared him up. Yeah. Carter comes out of the game, and so does uh, the big tight end, Parker Sell. So I'm assuming this would be their passing formation. Personnel, uh, they've got the Bloom kids split out here to the left and twins to the right. Third down and eight. Carr stays in the shotgun formation, puts a man in motion. The Tigers come across. It doesn't look like it. No flag on the play. And here's a sack in the backfield. And that is going to be a loss of four. That was close on the right end. Yeah, it looked like we... He must have lined up just far enough off. He got one yep. step and wasn't there. But early on... Like uh, here comes their punt team. So bend but don't break. That was a good job. Keep this score tied at seven and get one more possession before the half here, and maybe we can get something going in the last couple of minutes. 2.40 to play in this first half. Seven all, Glenwood and Carroll. This time the snap is good. Kick is up. It is going to be a little short. Bounces. And that's going to go out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. Yeah. Good punt. 2.17 to play. Tigers will take possession of the ball on their own 10. 90 yards to go, and you don't want to make a mistake that could let the other team put the points right. on the board. Glenwood's only got one timeout left, so you want to, you want to keep the clock running as much as you can here. Uh, force them, if they have to, to use their last timeout, but that's the only one they'd have left. Like, uh, Vincent's in the backfield. Yep, Vincent's still in there. Johnston to the right side. Two receivers right, two split to the left. They'll put a man in motion. Vincent wants to throw. Sees a man coming across the middle, and that ball thrown well ahead, but the uh, defender played it perfectly, and standing right there waiting for it was Ryan Leith as Baiting had that quick post. Yep. And Leith had cut it off and almost picked it off. Looked like Baiting maybe went to more defensive back Right, there. I was just going to say that. Baiting be pretty much became a defensive back there and made sure that uh, if he didn't catch it, nobody was going to. That helped Glenwood because now the clock stops. It only took out two seconds. Second down and ten. Flag on the play. Looks like Torrey Felton's got his hands on his head, so I'm assuming something happened with him out there. Well, the illegal procedures, unless the ref's doing the tootsie roll. <laughs> Prior to the snap, fast start, offense number six. Half the distance to the goal, second down. As many times as he's had to twirl his arms, do you think he's going to start singing rolling <laughs> on gonna, the river uh, or something yeah, for us? Yeah, he's going to start doing a little dance. <laughs> uh... <laughs> We got our own fan crowd out there. Yeah. Yeah. They can't hear us, so they like us still. Uh, I was going to take what's this time out for. 
Oh, we're going to bring everybody in for a meeting here. Find out what's happening. 2.02 oh, on the clock. Because 11 seconds ran off the clock. They're probably going to say that play didn't count. So it's going to tell them to put 2.11 or 2.13 back. Will the clock operator please reset the game clock to 2.12. 2.12. Thank you. Well, in nice manners there, too. Yes. Please. And, well, he didn't say please. No, he did say he thank, you. thank you. Yes, he did. What a job by the clock operator. I'm that sure that fast. job changed this this year, too, uh, you know. I don't think that's the same touch pad as last year. No, it's not, but I think we still have the same guys in there. Well, that's because they're good. There we go. There's an opening. Trying to stay find his bounds. way is Johnston. Yep. He'll stay in bounds. Rattle out to about the 19-yard line, so... Pickup of 14 on the play by Johnston. Yeah, be nice to get a first down here. If we if, if they Glenn would stop us here, I wouldn't be surprised if they take a timeout right away. It'll be third down and six for the Tigers. Ball on the 14-yard line. Glenwood did bring a fair amount of fans to this contest. On the other side, filling up about. Two thirds of the bleachers. Ooh. Here's a hit in the backfield as Johnson's dropped hard yeah, on the 10 yard line, and Glenwood's coach putting in a run there yep. to get his timeout called. As that is going to be about a four yard loss on the play and a timeout on the field by Glenwood. Don't forget, coming up, we've got the halftime show brought to you by Roselle Mutual Insurance. Founded in 1876, Roselle Mutual has stood the test of time. Go see them on Highway 71 North or call 712-792-4525 for all of your insurance needs. That's Roselle Mutual Insurance. That halftime show just a minute 29 away here on 1380 KCIM. Tied up 7-7 as the Tigers set to kick it off. Can't figure out if you should have the lights on, lights off to try to see. Problem is, I don't know if you can see your stat sheet and all I that. I can see mine, but you can't see I'm yours good. now. I'm huh? good. I got my glasses <laughs> on. But it does look better. Yeah, the, you can see, this, the, see the. Get that off. Got it off. It's a low line drive punt. That is going to yeah. hit and skid out of bounds. What a job there. Yep. You're going for a low line drive. Try to get it out of play. Make sure it's not returnable. Yeah, Max Glenn. protect on the back side, and the ball goes out at the 50. Yeah, and Glenwood only puts one guy back, so Nissen's been. Coach, the directional kick away from him. He's done a good job keeping it away from the return man, and and then he's. I think this this turf gives you gives the punter a better chance on a good roll for him. So now Glenn has got 50 yards with no timeouts left. We just got to do a good job of containing uh, Carter on those quick dives, and uh, now it's probably going to be past everybody out wide. First and ten. Oh boy, we're getting boy, a lot that of looked guys. like it should have oh. been. Everybody's asking why there wasn't a flag. Two yeah. receivers were down the field. And out and scrambling was Carr. He's going to pick up 10. It's this guy. close to a first down. It happened right here in front of this guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> what he was looking at, they were right in front of him. They got a nice jump start on it, but weren't able to get open. Good Cana job by the defense. Using, using the Canadian Football League rules. So it'll be first and 10 as Carr did pick up 10. Now here's a sprint left side, Silvis, and he's going to go down at the 23-yard line, so he'll pick up a 17. Yeah, and they're getting first down, so the clock stops. They get the chains marked, spotted, and got 23, 24 yards in two plays. So it'll be first and 10. They're going to put the big tight end out on the left side, or the big wide receiver this time moves out there. That's Ryan Bloom. Carr steps back, doesn't want to throw. He's got to sprint to the... Sideline, out of bounds, picks up maybe a yard. We'll have to wait for him to set yeah. the stick back up. He wasn't looking to gain any yards. He just wanted to stop the clock, so he did his job. 53 seconds on the clock. It'll be second and 10 ball on the Carroll 27. Tigers trying to bend and not break again. Take this game tied into halftime. Here's a motion in the backfield. Carr keeps it. He's got to be cut down infield this time. Yep, not a and first that's down. that's going to be a three-yard pickup. And for the first time, the clock will tick between plays, and we won't see Glenwood with their silly setup. No line straight back up. Tigers need to get off the field. They do. 
The defense is pounding. The bleachers are shaking. Here's the snap to Carr. He drops back, throws to his man downfield. We've got a flag on the play. And trying to wrestle his way into the end zone. And going to come up just short as Bloom on the one-yard line. But we'll wait and find out what this flag is. Yeah, it looks like we got two of yeah, them. Holding. I should say where it was thrown. That's usually a holding call. So Bloom was doing all he could to get into the end zone. But it looks as though it will be coming back. Yeah, Colby Christensen's thanking Thinking his making making sure he uh, yeah he's okay but he he lost track of the receiver just momentarily there and On then the play, he we have a hold offense number 76 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul we'll repeat third down so 10 yard penalty third down that rings up third down and 19 from the 35. 24 seconds remain, and boy, this student section in front of us, they're right below us there, stomping their feet, shaking uh, these new bleachers, so. and it's going right through the press box. Yep, the clock's running, so that's good for us. Oh, geez. Man in motion. <laughs> Car drops back, throws over the field. That was almost picked off. What a read there. That's Jang. As Jeklos had the jump, trying to take it away, and that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah. And 19 for Glenwood with 13 seconds left. Now you just don't let anybody behind you come up, make a tackle, and the clock will run out. So nobody's playing super deep. We got a little confusion here in the secondary, and a timeout called by McCartan before the snap. What a job there. He might yeah. have just saved himself and his defense there. Yep, I think Coach Rohitter realized somebody He's forgot to cover the slot. I think that's Tori Feldman's. You saw getting an earful there. You saw Jicklow move a man over, but yep. then there was no free safety on right. the fourth down, and that was not what you want in that no. situation. So the no. timeout called on the field. Yep. One would came out in the formation that they wanted to try to confuse our defense, and that and they did. And fortunately, we got a timeout called before the play play happened. So uh, no, I'm so sure they're going to have to. Just a reminder, coming up after the game in the post-game show, we'll announce tonight's Motor Inn player of the game. 13 Motor Inn of Carroll, your Toyota, Chevy, and Buick dealership for sales, service, parts, and collision. All you got to do is move and the light comes back on in here. I think they want two more seconds back on the clock, too, because I think there was, yep, there we go. Yeah, it's quit moving. <laughs> I, I was marking down uh, on the live reads here what I've actually been doing today, and it was enough to turn the lights back on. Boy, this technology. It's welcome to the 21st <laughs> century. Is that what we're in? So it'll be fourth down and 19 still. Ball on yeah. the 36. Carr is the lone man in the backfield. Two receivers split each way. Tigers show blitz. Carr throws over the middle, and that one is picked off by the Tigers. Tory Feldman actually had been better off just to knock it down because when we'd got, but it's only nine seconds left, I would think we're just going to take a knee and be satisfied going in halftime 7-7 seven, seven, and we get the ball to start the second half. So seven all, nine seconds remain here in the first half. We got the stomp going outside. What a great crowd here tonight for this opener at the Carroll Football Stadium and on the new field. Turf looks nice. A couple guys are out of jobs because they don't have anything to take care of now. <laughs> Get down, Cor <laughs> Colby. Take the don't snap, be go back, put his knee down, and that is going to burn up the first half. So at halftime, it's 7 7. Carroll and Glenwood, you're listening. To 1380 KCIM, your halftime show brought to you by Roselle Mutual Insurance is next up here on KCIM.
backfield. He didn't start the game, and he uh, he's really had some big runs. Uh, fortunately, uh, the Tigers have been able to keep him out of the end zone. Uh, made the defensive backs have made some nice tackles, preventing him from scoring touchdowns on his runs, and then uh, able to get a couple uh, fumble recoveries and and then a pick there at the end of the half. So, uh, you know, tie ball game. Uh, just so those, you know, you don't even have to say zero zero. It's seven seven and. You get the ball to start second half. We just got to find a way to get something consistency on offense going. Uh, play action pass early downs I think will work. We, 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 our quarterbacks just don't have the time to throw, and we got new quarterbacks, so uh, you know they're feeling a little fidgety back there. Uh, inexperienced offensive line. Our best play has been a power play going to our left with uh, Ryan Johnston carrying the ball and Marcus Lee pulling and kicking out the defensive end, but um, you know you can't just runs one play and expect that to, to carry the rest of the game. So we got to come up with some play. And I know Coach McCartan said he's really condensed the offense uh, up, up to now and just concentrate on very few plays, running the same plays out of different formations and hoping that uh, the players uh, with all the inexperience coming in can pick it up. And So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, the halftime came about the right time. We have so many more guys going both ways than Glenwood does. And then this warm, humid night, uh, especially those linemen, uh, they need a, a good breather here. Yeah, a chance for them to get a break. And you see some of the bigger linemen that maybe weren't set to start on defense finding their way in as they're trying to plug those gaps up front. Just a quick look at our stats here for the Rams of Glenwood. Carr has ran the ball eight times for seven yards. Shooty's got four carries for seven yards. He got Silvis, nine carries, 61 yards. Carol Carter, seven carries, 60 yards. And remember, the offense hasn't scored a point yet Right. for, yeah. for Glenwood. They haven't thrown the ball, all the, or they've tried twice. It was 0 for 2. They made one completion, but a holding penalty took that one off. So 30 rushes for 135 yards in a whole half. When you look at that number, that's not bad. And your defense didn't give up a point. No, right. And, you know, and most of those yards, second quarter, that was – you know, probably 80% of those 135 yards they gained here in the second quarter. So uh, uh, they they got good momentum rushing. They just uh, unable to keep keep possession of the ball and, and score. So for the Carroll Tigers, Johnston nine carries, 44 yards. Vincent's got four carries, negative one. Smith's uh, got uh, one carry for negative two yards, and Siebenhaler had a carry in there for uh, four yards. Then you've got uh, Vincent uh, tonight, one for three for 28 yards. Steven Aller, one for two for 28 yards. Smith and Bading both catching those passes. Um, they did have the one turnover that ended up being a pick six, and that's how we're tied up, 7-7, seven, seven, and what has been just a defensive battle here at the Carroll Football Stadium. We've got 8.30 left in the halftime. It is the Roselle Mutual Insurance Halftime Show. We'll take a look and some of the scores from around the area when we return on 1380 KCIM. It's weird when you can't hear anything in between. Yeah. You get so used to that that. Well, actually, actually, after we fixed it, we probably could have rehooked you up, but he wouldn't leave me alone, so. I got a, I have a nephew in Houston, Texas, who's listening to us, and he wants me to give him.
It's the Roselle Mutual Insurance Halftime Show. Tom Hawkamp with Terry Casper Bauer here at the Carroll Athletic Stadium. It's 7-7 at the half. I do want to remind everybody, coming up uh, after the uh, ball game on KCIM and also on uh, Kick 106.7, it will be the uh, scoreboard show. I believe uh, Nathan Cones is the one to blame if that one doesn't That's right. sound good. It's this all year. him this year. Yeah, yeah he's going to take, take control. He's got a lot of help back there, too. Jeff Onna, Lonnie Miller. Uh, Mark Phil Myers. Mark Phil Myers all going to stop yep. and, and help him out. So uh, well, we'll call it help now. We'll see how it <laughs> yeah. works for him later. But uh, as we take a look at other scores from around the area, Kemper leads St. Albert 15-0 to last time we heard. It looks like Clarinda is on top of Shenandoah 23-13. Harlan on top of Denison 21-7. to Atlantic over Sadell, 31-6. IKM Manning on top of ACGC, 28-0. And South Central Calhoun in control over East Sac County, 25-0. It looks like we offended somebody. Yep, Nathan texted me. He's just listening. <laughs> he should be prepping yeah, He should show. be. He should be working on what he's going to be talking about in the next hour, hour and a half. Well, rumor has it he's not the only one listening tonight, huh, Terry? Yeah, that's right. I got to – I got to give a shout out. I got a text from a nephew of mine all the way down in Houston, Texas. Ryan Putin's listening to us. And uh, he said, I can hear you guys. It'd be nice if you give me a shout out. So I guess I better do so because he's uh, about two months away from being a first time daddy. So his, his, his world's going to be coming to uh, <laughs> a little change, <laughs> little change for him. One, so, uh, hello, Just Ryan. Yep. That's then. right. Yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> About 15, no, oh, got even longer than that ago, 17, 18 years ago, last time he played football on, on the old field here. Well, we're glad to know that he's checking in and making sure things are working and people can hear us, you know. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's the main part. And boy, I mean, a great crowd has came out. This is the uh, first time, Terry, we were talking about it in the break. So the new setup has the student section. And uh, now they stop, and it just, it's a whole vibration that comes through. I mean, it, it's one of the coolest feelings. Be interested to see how that uh, aluminum bleacher just resonates out over the field for the players. Yeah, and, and actually the group that's right below us are the middle school kids, and then the old setup, they sat on the visitor's side at the, on the north end because there wasn't enough room for them over here, and then the high school kids sat on the far south end on this side. So, uh uh, middle school kids have a little more energy than those high school kids do, and it doesn't take much for them. It all takes uh, one someone to s put one foot down to s smash a plastic cup or something, and they all think they got to start stomping on the, on the bleachers. <laughs> well, it helps that the uh, <laughs> scoreboard gets them going. Oh, yeah. The oh, big yeah. video board. Yeah. And yeah. Those guys, uh, Tiger Vision, I believe, is the uh, group in, in control of that. And uh, You can also hear this broadcast on uh, – on their streaming yep. deal. You probably yep. know a lot more about that. I, I I, just what I hear. I know uh, <laughs> they got something going with YouTube that uh, people can go listen to. Uh, can I think they can actually watch it. Uh, the playing on YouTube and in the commercials, there's no playing, uh, just just voices. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's all, it's... <laughs> These, these, like I said, these high school kids now, they've grown up with this technology and things they can do, and uh, you wouldn't be able to do something like this without what, without them uh, being involved. So, You know, and, and something like this doesn't come about without uh, the uh, school board. You know, they had to vote on the scoreboard, what kind of scoreboard to get. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's hundreds of different scoreboards. I mean, we could have put up a Boston Red Sox and made somebody live in the thing, you know. But yeah. they went uh, – they were willing to spend the money on a, on a nice one, and the graphics and everything coming across it have, have been outstanding here for the opening night. I'm sure there's a few glitches, but I don't know what they yeah, are just watching and it. And last so. week I was up here just to kind of see what it's like and uh, ended up talking to the gentleman who was in charge of, of this project. Uh, he lives in Madrid, and he told me uh, he's been around the state doing a lot of these, and he said uh, with the scoreboard and everything, uh, the only high school field he's seen that uh, he says is – Better than this, maybe with the uh, West Des Moines Valley. So he's, he was real impressed with uh, everything on, on, on uh, the plans and what we did here. And earlier tonight, uh, around 7 o'clock, they did introduce uh, a number of people who were involved in the planning and development of this uh, 
of this facility the and committee. yeah, yep. the stadium committee and and you had the ads and uh, you know and, and from the Carroll High standpoint, you had a superintendent and an ad who started who was who were working Rob Cordes and Keith Stribe when this project started, but they both retired before it ended. So then t Dr. Kevin Lean and Randy Beeson came in as superintendent and AD respectively, and they finished the project off. So uh, kudos to those four guys because they had to work, you know, together to make that transition as smoothly as possible. And and then you had booster club members from both schools and uh, a lot of parents involved. And uh, you know, you, there's no way you're going to get a something like this passed unless you have uh, have cooperation from both schools. So let's we'll see if we can't kill the light. Quit moving. The, the bugs are just... Oh. I mean, what a deal we've got here in Carroll now for these kids uh, locally to play football on, folks. And it is... It's going to be outstanding. Well, that's going to do it for the uh, Roselle Mutual Insurance Halftime Show, founded in 1876. Roselle Mu Mutual has stood the test of time. Go see them on Highway 71 North or call 712-792-2525. Should have never said that about Ryan. Now I'm getting all kinds of texts from people say, hey, I could use a shout-out. <laughs> <laughs> that happens once in a while. It's usually just my mom, though. That yeah. Wants, no. <laughs> All right. So Glenwood set to kick off after the Tigers deferred. They'll catch the ball and work towards the north. The Pat Band returning back to the stadium. The kick's taken by the up back at the 30-yard line, through, delivered to the 34 before he is pushed out of bounds. Kobe. And that was uh, Colby Christensen. Yep. Did a nice job catching that short kick and getting what he could. So, uh, Fairly decent field position, 34-yard line. We just got a nice to get get something going this first drive, keep possession of the ball, and let our defense rest some. Colby Vincent's in the backfield. You've got or is your quarterback Johnston in the backfield behind him. Feldman split wide right, baiting down to the left side. They'll put Smith in motion left to right as he heads to the wide side of the field. Here's a handoff up the middle. Johnston took a stutter step to the right side, then came back. He'll pick up two, maybe even three, just cutting back on the counter play. And Marcus Lee just missed his, his kick out block there and actually got the wrong shoulder into the defensive end. He was able to come down and get tackle Johnston for that three yard loss. Uh, Ryan did a nice job uh, falling forwards to get the three yards. So to bring up second down and seven from the left side hash mark, working towards the north end zone. Johnson, or excuse me, they'll hand off to Smith this time as he was in motion, took it on the run, and the sweep goes for maybe a yard out there as he was hit rather quickly. Yeah, Glenwood does a nice job swarming to the football. They're sure tacklers, and they're fresh. Not very few, if any of these guys play any offense, they're pretty much uh, platooning kids and trying to keep uh, eight or nine guys uh, going one way so they have very few kids uh, playing both ways. So the Tigers come set ball near the center of the field on the 39-yard line on their side of the 50. Vincent drops back, wants to air it out on the quick out to Bating. He was there on the cut, catches it. He'll be wrestled down at the 48-yard line. That is a pickup of nine on the pass play outside. It Vincent threw it, Baiting was there on the catch, and that was all timing. Yeah, that was great timing. Uh, Kobe actually threw the ball before Isaiah made his cut, and uh, when Isaiah cut and turned his head, the ball was there, and uh, great job by Kobe putting it there, and, and a great job by Isaiah making the, making the catch. That's a Tiger first down with the ball now out to the 48-yard line. Still on the Tiger side of the 50. Vincent wants to throw right side. And Missed his man a bit high as that time he was trying to get it in the hands of Pettit coming from the inside out. And there was a lot of traffic over yeah, that way. Yeah, Glenwood defenders really closed the gap on those out passes. you got to be careful. That's what uh, what they scored on was a, a, a pick six on an out pattern that uh, didn't quite get out wide enough. So you, you, it's, a, it's a tough pass to make, especially when uh, Glenwood's playing man-to-man -man up tight like they are. Second and 10, 10.40 to play in quarter number three. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Vincent will put a man in motion. Coming across the formation. Now he'll take it, run straight forward. 
and he'll pick up about five on that play. Yeah, and that was just a design quarterback run. There was no fake or anything. He just took the ball and ran up inside and <clears throat> picked up about you know, a little over three, three and a half yards there. And so it'll be third down and seven for the Tigers as they've crossed into Glenwood territory. Johnston in the backfield with Vincent. Vincent takes the snap, drops back, wants to pass. He's going to air it out for Baiting. Baiting cuts back, tries to make the catch. That one was going to be right on the sideline yep. and a tough catch anyways. Yep. It was a back shoulder throw, but the defense of Ben Burke was right there with Baiting, but Baiting had a chance, but probably would have been tough to get those feet down. Yeah, if he'd have caught it, still it would have been out of bounds, but too far away from the marker to, to, to go for it. So going to punt the ball and hopefully push Glenwood back deep in their territory here, get Ty Nissen to get another one of those directional punts away from the return man and get the ball down some si somewhere inside the 20. Missing the, missing the lineman up front here. So McCartan will burn a timeout for the Tigers trying to get everything straightened out. That's Got the man coming out here as they're set to punt. Sometimes on that, you're almost better off just taking five yards and saving the timeout. But Coach McCartan decided that time that he wasn't going to take five yards. He went ahead and burned one of his three timeouts. Remember, after the game, we'll announce the Motor Inn player of the game. Motor Inn of Carroll, your Toyota, Chevy, and Buick dealership for sales, service, parts, and collision. Look for pictures of the Motor Inn player of the game on the radio station social media sites later tonight. And a few guys in the running for that right now. Johnston's done a lot of work in the backfield. Then uh, defensively, we would be uh, amiss not to throw Marcus Lee's name into the yeah. uh, pile of plus, guys. Uh, plus the number of times he's pulled and led Johnston through some of those holes. So the Tigers set to punt now. Fourth down and seven ball on the 49-yard line. One man back. For Glenwood is John Palmer. Stands at the 14-yard line. Snap is good. Kick is high. Nice wobbly kick. Going to come down with a fair catch at the 20 as Palmer stuck his feet down right there and yep, pulled it right in. Right at the 20. Right at the 20. So the Tigers will open up the half with a punt, and now it'll be time to see if the defense found a way to slow down this offensive punch through the middle that is bent but still hasn't found a way to break this Carroll Tiger defense. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see who starts in the back. Looks like Carter's in there to start second half for, for Glenwood. 9.55 to play here in the third period, seven all. Glenwood lines up, everybody sprints to their spot, comes set, Carr takes the snap, hands to the first man through, which is Carter who spins around. He'll get out to the 24 yard line before he's brought down. Yeah, he's a the brute to bring bring down good 215 pounder with strong legs and like said he returned from last year with a, about a thousand yard rushing to his credit and had uh, had over 100 yards against uh, against us you know it's interesting they thought his skills at first would be better off on the defensive side yeah, of the ball yeah. but it didn't take long to get him back on the offensive side he's your deep back again they'll pick the hand off no they do give it to the first man through he is wrapped up tied up brought down after a pickup of just a yard, I believe that's Silvis getting tied in yep. a knot there. Coming up off the uh, bottom of the pile, no other than Mr. Marcus Lee also uh, in there helping out on the tackle. Looked to be Chase Gladden. Yeah, and and uh, the, the, I, when Chase has been in on the field defensively and they run to his side, he and Marcus Lee are on the same side. They usually uh, are taking care of business there. It'll be third and five. Glenwood comes set. Carr goes with the hard count, trying to get somebody to jump. Now steps back. He audibles. They're going to hand off to the left side, and no place to go that time for Carter. He was met hard in the hole by the linebacker, Brennan Coffrin. Yep, and Lee was there again, and looked like Parker Clucky might have been in, in there too. So great job by the left side of the Tiger defense to prevent uh, Glenwood from getting the first down. Coffrin just hit him right in the hole, shoulder pad to shoulder pad, and then everybody helped bring him down. And now we'll see a punt from Glenwood. Pettit and Jicklow back deep. Jeez, Snap was all right, almost blocked. 
Might have been partially tipped. I think, yep. They're not going to throw the flag. Uh, they are saying it White was tipped. Yeah, White Hat's giving yep. the tip sign, so. So that'll bring the ball down at the 49-yard line. It came out of there kind of awkward, but he was in a hurry to kick it also because he didn't get much help from the offensive line and well, a great rush by the defense. Yeah, he bobbled the snap just a little bit. Looked like Mason Hewton might have been in there. He's got a hand on that. So, so first and 10 from the 48. So the Tigers pretty well get the ball right back from where they punted from last time. Yep. So Good. just Good. a few minutes off the clock, really the only difference. Field, field position game, and right now it's in our favor. So it'll be first and 10. Vincent in the backfield, Johnston to his left side, two receivers each way. Five man front for the Tigers. Now they'll put a man in motion right to left across the formation. Handoff, trying to find the seam is Smith, and he just can't get to the edge. No. The Glenwood defense is really good. They, like I said before, they swarmed with the football, and they have a good, good, good speed from their linebacker and uh, in inside and outside linebackers both really fly to the football. And, uh, we just can't find anything to the outside. Well, Vincent, there was trying to just get his guy going quick, but the defense kind of heavy on that side picked up the first block and. Then Smith just couldn't find any place to go. It'll be second and 11. Here's a man in motion left to right across the formation. They'll run the option. Vincent decides to keep it this time. Still no place to go. He's going to nope. lose a foot. Yep. This is when you're looking out there and you're trying to count. Now, do they have 12 guys on the field? Because it sure looks like we can't get anything going here. they got too many guys that we can't block. And uh, we just can't find, find something that, that works for us. So it'll be third down and 12, ball on the 50. Tigers unable to move it. Vincent's going to stand in the shotgun formation again. To his right side stands Johnson. They'll put the man in motion, drop back. They're just going to air this one out, try to play jump ball, and it is going to be a good deflection out there on the far side by Ryan Leaf. Just played it up, went up to knock it down, knew it was a bad idea to pick it off. I don't know if it helped to close this door or not. Oh, well, you can close it a little bit. Oh, we can't. Takes a team to keep the door <laughs> closed up here. Yeah, look at that. We did it. <laughs> Geniuses. <laughs> Albert 11. Einstein has nothing on us. <laughs> Fourth and 11. Here's your punt. It's an end over end punt. Going to land Stay at in the bounds. 20. Roll down Stay. inside the 10. Now Get down, down there, somebody. Yeah. There. Oh. oh, boy, the Tigers almost <laughs> wrecked themselves here, but covering the ball up at the one-yard line, Jacob tooting for the Tigers. Yeah. Parker Clucky just about, I think it's Parker, yeah, just about knocked him into the end zone. So Glenwood will start at their own one. You know, all it takes is two points to change the outcome That's of right. this ballgame. Yeah. They're tied up 7-7, seven, 6-16 seven, six, to play here at the Carroll Athletic Field on a beautiful night for football. All right, so we'll need another good defensive stand here and keep getting good field position for our offense and hopefully something will break. They mark the ball out on the two-yard line instead. Glenwood piles everybody up. Everybody sprints to their spot. Carr takes the snap. Quarterback keep. He's just going to push. He Jeez. gets a nice push. Yeah. He gets out to about the nine-yard line. They'll call it the eight. Wow. So a pickup of six on the quarterback keeper. Yeah, that's his that's, biggest run of the night. Yeah, that's not a bad play for them with all those big linemen up front there and – just pushing everybody. Marcus Lee was pushing, yelling at the sideline like he needed a breather, and he's going to get one now. Looks like uh, uh, Luke Woosley's taking his spot. So we can see what, what that does with Marcus out of the game. Here's the snap. Hand off to Carter. Makes one man miss, two man miss before a big hit comes in from the uh, left side behind. That's Coffrin again. Laying a little lumber, but not before a first down run as the ball bounces out to the 20. That's an 11-yard carry for Carter. Yeah, we're just trying to get some fresh fresh defensive linemen in there and just see if somebody can uh, hold up the middle of the field. Nate Hoffman just came out and Josh Luft went in. and That's a, a, at least four different defensive tackles that we've used right there at the, over, over the center. So they'll line everybody up again behind, split their way. 
Carr up under center, split back behind. They'll try to run a counter. It looked like they got in their own way this time and pick up just a yard. Yeah, that time Isaiah Bating did a nice job slanting in from his right defensive end spot and made the tackle. Luke Woosley also in there on that tackle. They will give him a credit of a yard on that. So to bring up second and eight, so they give him two. Ball on the 22, 514 to play in quarter number three of a tie, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Carr under center, takes the snap right away, hands off left side. This time trying to push his way through Silvis, and it gets turned around, laid down at the 25-yard uh, line, so a pickup of three. And they might be setting themselves up for some play action there because Carr is really coming out after he hands off, faking it uh, bootleg the opposite way, and uh, one of these times he's going to probably keep it. And we defensive end away from the ball's got or for away from the action's got to be ready for that. Third and four, and they take their big tight end out of the ball game. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Carr in the shotgun formation. He's going to drop back, takes a look over the middle, and that one is going to be incomplete. Palmer wants a flag with. The a little contact down the field, but I think it was incidental. Yep, that was Slade Siebenauer that, put it in there for a passing situation there and did a nice job on coverage. And that'll bring up a fourth down and four, and it looks as though Glenwood's going to bring in the punt team. It's been an adventure for them so far tonight. Yeah, and you just always got to be ready. Fourth and fourth and five or less, you never know. They try some, some fake something to try to force you to j jump off sides and get a first down without having to snap the football so you got to be careful 428 on the clock as they kick it away in a 7-7 ball game snap was decent kick is high Jicklow calling everybody to get away from this thing and they're trying to yep. so one of the Glenwood players trying to move one of the Tigers players into, <laughs> into the it. ball sure but the ball now on the 48 yard line on the Tigers side of things so the Tigers been playing around midfield here this whole second half just had a march up there the first time, but then Glenwood kindly gives them the ball back right there each each time so far. Yep, and we just <laughs> keep getting taken over right around that 50-yard line and just can't get anything going offensively. But as long as we keep punting the ball, that keeping Glenwood inside their 20 and our defense does their job, it, you know, hopefully uh, we'll catch a break here and break one off. And so Smith is wide left. Baiting will go tight formation on the left side. Jicklow out to the right side. They'll put a man in motion through the backfield. That's Pettit. Vincent rolled to the right. He's got to step up. No place to throw as the pocket closes up on him. He'll be dropped for no law or no gain. Yeah, we just can't get any open receivers. Man-to-man uh, -man coverage, and our receivers got to find ways to get themselves open and uh, maybe run some different routes. Uh, I haven't seen what would be called a, a five route, which is basically a hitch. Uh, get your guy backpedaling and turning and sprinting like it, like you're running a deep route and then come back and hit something quick that way uh, just to uh, get us uh, get us the completion, get some confidence in people. Woosley takes the spot of Pettit. He'll jump to the right side in that split end formation. Now they put a man in motion. Trying to. Vincent wants a man to go in motion, and now we've got. Play clock looks like went a down. Delay yep. He wanted, he wanted uh, Smith to go in motion, but. Yard penalty remains second down. Let's go. So that's what they come up with. Another five-yard penalty for the Tigers. They've been, been penalized. Six times, but only three of them accepted, accepted. For, for 25 yards. Most of those in the first possession. So to bring up second down and 15, ball on the 43-yard line. Tigers moving the wrong way offensively here in the second half. Two receivers each way. They'll put Woosley in motion. He sprints through. Now they're going to lob it over the middle mm -hmm. to Smith. And just too long. Right idea yep. as Smith got the brakes put on him, I think, uh, little help there by Bales as Bale saw he was beat and stuck his hand right in the old belt loop to help slow him down but Smith's arms just not worked. quite nope, long nope. enough and then uh, we just don't have uh, anyone that can shift gears on those passes up in the air and go get it you know one thing you don't realize that you you lose from year to year uh, you know there's a whole track team out here for the last two years for these Tigers 
And now they're rebuilding that too. Right, yep. So Vincent wants the ball in the shotgun formation, steps back. He just lobs this one up, and it was almost picked off, but two of the Glenwood players fought for it. Yeah. Vincent yeah. lands hard on the deck, and that'll bring up fourth down. Silvius, who uh, was standing there, who's waiting for it. And Bales, fortunately for the Tigers, jumped in front of him and knocked the pass down, or it would have been intercepted. So we're still tied up 7-7. The Carroll Tiger defense has not given up a score yet. It was a defensive pick six for Glenwood that got him on the board. Here the Tigers are set to uh, kick this one away again. Snap is good. Kick is well. That's an end over end kick. Going to land at the 30. Sprint out of bounds around the 17-yard uh, line. Or excuse me, 22. the 22-yard line. Looking on the Carroll Carol sidelines on the bench there with his pads off. Looks like that might be Tory Feldman down there getting looked at by uh, one of the doctors down there. I think they're working down on the uh, lower leg part there, yeah. so Coach hopefully Shadow. everything's all right there. Coach Shadow's looking at it too. 3.07 to play in the third, 7-7. Seven, seven. It'll be first and 10 for Glenwood from the 22. Three guys come set, one man split left, everybody else sprints to their spots. Carr takes the handoff, hands off left side, no place for Carter to go this time. Yep. He is job. dropped at the line of scrimmage and helping to slow him down was Tyler Tooney. Yep, Tyler Tooney, Marcus Lee, and Luke Woosley are all in there. And Slade Siebenauer is playing the safety spot for, for Feldman, so that's got to be Torrey at, uh, on, the, on the bench down there. Got the wave going here at the stadium. I didn't know the young kids knew what that was anymore. Well, the, the poor Tigers running with the wave sign to help them out. <laughs> Here's your second and ten play. Carr takes the handoff, hands off quickly left side. Silvius, Silvius. He'll fall forward and pick up two. Maybe even three on that. Not much creativity to these offenses tonight. It's been pretty much. Glenwood has about two or three different plays that they've run, and Carroll doesn't have too many more that they've been running. And uh, it does, uh, neither team has uh, come close to 200 yards offense, I don't think. Well, they said make some noise, and the fans have obliged. So it'll be third and seven for Glenwood. Carr takes the snap, drops back, sees oh, a man wide, wide open. open in the middle. Nobody on him. Trotting down the field, and he'll use a block. That's Colton Schutte, and he'll be down 10 and pushed out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where he came out of the backfield to, or out of there. Somebody uh, messed up on their man-to-man -man assignment and found him all alone down the middle of the field. Wasn't a pretty pretty pass at all, but it got to him, then, which was all that it needed. Didn't have to be pretty. Yep, just get and it to him. a 67-yard gain for Glenwood has flipped the field, and now the Tigers find their backs against their own end zone. It'll be first <coughs> down and eight. First down and goal from the eight. Glenwood goes with a heavy set. Everybody is in this time. Hands off left side. Just trying to push his way through. Jeez. And the pile's going. That is just a rugby scrum yep, into that's... the end zone. Goes Silvius from eight yards out. Yep. That was, like you said, that was just like a scrum. Just get in behind all those big bodies and keep your feet moving and try to get lost there. And linemen just keep driving and knocking guys back. So Glenwood takes the lead for the first time of the night with an eight-yard Silvius run. PAT is on the way here. The holder will be Carr, the quarterback. The kick is high and good off the foot of Nusser. And it's 14-7, Glenwood on top of Carroll. We'll take a break. Hear from our fine sponsors back after this on 1380 KCIM. Turn the light off, then close the door.
Uh, Glenwood has found themselves on top here, 14 to seven, as we've got a short kickoff, taken at the 15. Trying to find a seam, no, not much running room there for is that Dawson Edwards. Is that 23? I think it is 23, yep, I think it is. Dawson Edwards got it out to the 30, so decent field position, not terrible, but just we just gotta get something going here. We, just can't seem to sustain any drive. You know, I'm not I'm not a, a fan of trickery, but it might put some excitement into this game too. Yeah, got to come up with something here. You know, get the get them going again. Here's a quick hitter up the middle. No room for Johnston as everybody is piled inside. The free safety was behind the line of scrimmage at the snap. Yeah. As soon as the snap came, he was coming forward to cover like a defensive end spot. They're yeah. not even worried about the deep throw. No. Nope. Uh, kind of like the Tigers. So the Tigers will have to find a way to sneak one in just like Glenwood did. And with Torrey Feldman out, that, that takes away one of our uh, wide receivers with a little bit of speed. Woosley's wide right. They'll put a man in motion. That's Smith. They're going to hand off to him. Smith's trying to get to the outside. He's showing off the wheels, turns it up, takes what he can get as he runs off into the Glenwood sideline. Nice uh, one of those Glenwood guys helped him to apply the brakes. Yep. He's yep. going to pick up three on the play and bring up uh, third down and nine. Yeah, <laughs> ran a long ways for three and got a lot of that because Ryan Johnson was able to get a little bit of a push on the outside linebacker there to free him up somewhat, but uh, still third and longs. See what the Tigers draw up here. 13 seconds on the play clock. Tied up 7 all. 44 seconds on the ticker here in the third quarter. Here's the snap to Vincent. Vincent looks left side, throws it, but he throws it well behind, and it looks like some miscommunication as the receiver had cut up the sideline, but he had thrown it deeper like the route was going to be ran about five yards difference, and mm -hmm. that'll bring out the punt team for the Tigers again. Yeah, and you don't know, both inexperienced. That's Jang Jiglow, the receiver who didn't play at all, wasn't even out for football last year. And then Colby, Vincent, the uh, first-time varsity starter here. So uh, that, that obviously was not, uh, they were not on the same page in that pass. So the Tigers to punt it away. It's a high end over end punt. Palmer's going to run over. He couldn't field it. I don't know if it touched him. He's he acting like it yeah. did the way he's sprinting back. Now he's got to pick it up, and he's going to be brought down at the 15. I think it touched him, and he was afraid to not go pick it up. Yeah. Now he, he's kind of injured on the play, yeah. it looks like. Got his ankle caught underneath him. But, yeah, he, he ran after it like it had touched him, and he must have touched him enough that he knew the official saw that he touched him. So... Well, as soon as you act like it touched you, you have yep. to go get it because yep. <laughs> no yeah. replay here. Nope, nope. Mm. Well, it, it's a break for us. So we put some back under 15. Now we just, just got to make sure we don't have any mental mental slip-ups and let somebody get free again on the, on the pass play. Just an update. Kemper 21, St. Albert 0 after 3. That one from Nick Brinks covering that one. So here's a quick dive. Boy, it was almost taken away <laughs> on the handoff. What a read that time by the Tigers' defense. Uh, who's coming up there at the bottom? I don't know, but he wanted the handoff. Well, that was, was that Isaiah Bating? Yeah, it looks like Isaiah Bating was. Yeah, he, he sprinted the gap and met him where they were trying to hand it off. And, you know, I believe if Carr hands that thing off, he actually gives it to Bating. It's Bating, yeah, which would have been okay. Quarter's over. So Carr's going to lose two. We played three. It's Glenwood 14, Carroll 7. You're listening to 1380 KCIM.
We're gonna get into a selfie here with the uh, middle schoolers. We're gonna we're gonna go social. Or, uh, we're gonna go big. Like, I don't know that they can even see us through these windows. How nice it oh, is! Oh, good sack. Here's a sack in the backfield. Yep. What a job by Beatty. <laughs> now he comes up limping though, but he got in the backfield, and that's gonna be a big loss. As that is a loss of 12 on the play. We should take more selfies to help <laughs> yeah, the defense. There you go. Well, I'm sure you get into a lot of those in your free time. Oh, yeah, day. yeah. It's just uh, I have a hard time <laughs> getting through a day without one. All right, third and long here. We Nothing nothing crazy here. Somebody third down and 21. They'll counter. Run the counter play with Carter. Carter's trying to find a seam. We've got a flag on the play. I'm guessing this is going to be a holding, and we've got a man down. In the end zone for the Tigers. Yeah, 56 or 58 for Glenwood. You don't have to name them. The ref will do it for yeah. us. So. But, uh, yeah, it just looked like he took him and, and threw him. And now the coaching staff running out to check him out. I think the Glenwood coaching or trainer staff stepped out, too, just to make sure yeah, right was, away he yeah, was, was right there. So. 14 to 7, 11 16 to play in this ball game. Let's see what the official has to say about this. And it looks like it's going to go backwards here. On the run, we had a hold, number 58 on the offense, half the distance to the goal. We play third down. So we do have an official's timeout. Looks oh, like Tyler tuning. I'm hoping yeah. it's just a cramp, but I don't know. It looks. Remember, he's trying to work it off a little bit there with the uh, the coaching staff doing some stretch it out yeah. there in the end zone. But he'll have to come out for a play. We'll see if we can get him a little ride across the field. You know, for the time of year it is, it's not a bad night for football. No, no. But it's it's it's, it's still. You know, you do all that conditioning and you think you're ready, but it's still a whole different deal when and, you put on the pads, and, and, line up across from somebody, and, and start hitting. Yeah, and then you tell kids to hydrate themselves. Drink, drink, drink. When you think you've got too much to drink, drink some more. So you try to eliminate a lot of these things, but uh, sometimes you just can't help it. So it'll be third down and 23. Ball sits on the three-yard line for the Tigers. They could sure use some excitement here. Safety, you know, yep. just a, a turnover. I mean, whatever it takes to get these guys going. So Glenwood will line up in their standard fashion. They'll go heavy. Carr just wants to try to dive yep. forward, and he's going to take two yards. Yep, they just want to make sure they didn't turn the ball over or, like you said, get a safety, and they're content with the way their defense is playing, just punt the ball out and – and uh, leave it up to their defense to, to keep us out of the end zone. So the Tigers will put two guys back again. Pettit and Jockham. Or Jicklow, excuse me. Boy, he's right on the edge of the end line there. And it's been an adventure in punting. It's a low snap. Don't Kick hit him. Kick off. They go. get away from him. Jicklow's going to come up, field it, tries to make a spin, and he is going to be pulled down at the 26-yard uh, line. They did a good job catching the ball. That's the big thing there is don't let it bounce, and you never know. You get a 20-yard roll or something. You come up and catch it, and now you're in a great field position at the 27. Now's a chance to, to put one in. So the Tigers have a chance, trailing 14-7, to 10-29 to play in the fourth. Ball sits on the 27-yard line officially. Coach McCartan's looking for somebody to help there, Kobe Christensen. Just trying to find that last guy, so Christensen will check in. Doing the hard work down there next to McCartan, sending in the plays. He's probably not going to get enough credit as uh, Kellen Jones. Yeah, yeah. He's the interpreter down there. Vincent takes the snap. They want to run the screen. It's almost picked off. Yeah. Not much room here for... I believe it was Jicklow coming yeah, back. Yeah, it was. Just, see. Uh, just a, wow. <coughs> that ball was almost picked off going the other way. Yeah, again. John Lee was, John Lee read that and came up hard from a safety spot and just about. That would have been an easy six for him if he had 
pick that one off. But instead, the Tigers turn it into a gain of four, bringing up second down and six. You know, that's how you got to try to spread the field. Woosley in motion this time. They don't give it to him. They'll go straight up the middle with Johnston. Johnston dives forward past the 20s to the 19. Yeah, that's good. For four more yards. Yep, we got third and two. So, obviously, two down territory for us. We just can't get any, no negative yards. Just got to average a, a, a yard on each of these next two plays to keep the sticks moving. Looks like Tuning's walking fine down here in front of the bench. 9.27 to play in this contest. Tigers threatening, trying to tie it up. They'll put a man in motion left to right. That is Smith. They'll hand back off to Johnson. Johnson's piled up right away. It's going to be close, close to a first down. My guess is a measurement's coming. Yeah, it's going to be, could be a first one of the year, huh? Nope, they don't believe nope, me. Nope. Just short. They're saying it's short. From here, it looked like it should have been measurable. Uh, and Coach McCartan could ask for it if he, I think it's close enough. The marker is on the half yard line and the ball is close to that, yeah, it looks like. Must be the five eighths <laughs> yard line. Kind of interesting here. Um, it's fourth down and one. We don't need I'd so play clock ran out. So did Denny, there was some confusion. Was timeout called? No, I don't. I saw the flag, so I don't think it was. All right. So gosh, it's a terrible time for that to happen. Well, now they're talking it over, so we'll wait and see. I think Coach McCartan's thinking he called it. Prior to the timeout by Carroll Community, we have a delay game, which is a dead ball foul on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So there is the official ruling. The penalty came before the timeout. Yeah, it's bad order. We need to get that timeout before the penalty. Surprised he kept the timeout. Yeah. Why not just take yeah. the penalty, move back? But I don't think you have to in that case. Nope. And that's our second time out too. So you know, if we get a chance to later this this quarter to put something in. So one one used up early on in the half on a punt, and then this one here on a fourth and one, which will bring up a fourth and six. The yeah. offense is still out there. Vincent stands in that pistol formation to his right side. He's got Johnston to the right side. It's Woosley and. Also, Christensen, it looks like. They'll throw back. Oh, there we the go. The ball is caught by Jicklo, and he'll be tackled. But it'll be a first down for the Tigers. As yeah. That ball is caught 10 yards down the field. And Ben Burke, Burke uh, the defensive back on that play, slipped and fell on, on Jang's cut and allowed Jang to come up with a big, big catch there and a uh, big first down. Well, Jicklo just stuck his feet in the turf and made a turn. Let's see if they try to throw one up to him. Yeah, he's, he's got a little height advantage oh yeah, out there. He's got a good wingspan. Here's a man across. That's Woosley. They're going to give off to Johnston again. Same play, same result. As they're just going to go right back to the line of scrimmage. Actually lost a yard on this dive yeah. play. Yeah, and that time uh, Chase Gladden pulled and, and somehow got caught up in a pile and didn't get anyone blocked and forced Johnson to cut back inside where all the Glenwood linemen were waiting for him. So Johnson will stand in the backfield. Now left side you got Jicklo along with Pettit. Christensen's out right. They want to throw up the fade this time oh. and that's going to come up just short. Had him. Wasn't quite the fade I thought it was going to be as it came down a little bit early. Yeah, it's Woosley. Woosley ran a, just a. Just needed to come back and get that one. I don't out. think he spotted it early yeah. enough to find it. Yeah. He, he was open, though. If he led him towards to the pylon, he would have would have had it to the corner pylon, not to the Front goal line pylon. pylon. Yep. yep. So third and 12 for the Tigers. Ball is on the 15-yard line. 
to get a first down without scoring. Vincent takes it. We've got a false start. Yep. Whistle blew for the ball is leaving snaps. Tigers just wanted a little bit more room to yep, work with. That gives you more, more room to run your route. White Hat's going over and wants to get a number so he can say it. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number eight. Five yard penalty remains third down. So there you go, five yard penalty remains third down. I got the Tigers for six accepted penalties for 40 yards on the night already. Yeah. And how many, at least four more that were not accepted? At least. So it'll be third and 17. You expect a few early on. Here's Vincent from the shotgun. He's going to throw this one up. He's got Baiting, Baiting trying to fight for it. Got Baiting it. goes up, catches it. Touchdown, no yep. Tigers. The Vincent laid that ball up. That's as good a pass as he's had tonight. Laid it up there for only for Baiting to go get it. And he, Isaiah did a, a great job Just separating himself and going up and getting it at its highest point. Climbed the ladder for the touchdown. 17-yard pass. Vincent to Baiting. Kind of a big extra point coming up here. New, the lone man standing out at the 10 yard line right now. Okay. Let's see if we got enough. One official sprinting in. Oh. That was almost blocked from the right side, yeah. but it is not. Yeah. It is through, and we are tied up in Carroll, 14-14, as the Tigers take on the Rams of Glenwood. We'll be back after this word from our sponsor on 1380 KCIM. He took that penalty. Said, Let's give Isaiah five more yards to work with, and and he needed that. And I'll tell you what, this is good to see Max New year ago in this game. He felt so bad because it was his missed extra point was the difference in the uh, one point loss. And tonight he's been true and on the two extra points, and he's had a nice kickoffs, and uh, it's great to see. The bleachers are rocking for the kick out from New. He's got it teed up on the 40. We're all tied up again with 7.10 to go. This one is going to be taken at the three on the right side. Trying to set up his blocks as Parker, and he's going to be ridden out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Yep. That's good deep kickoffs. Get good coverage downfield. Now defense has to come up with one more stop. Got the Vanami, the sophomore Vanami kid back out there, defensive tackle. Just keep rotating guys in there and try to find somebody. It's Trying to slow down that interior run game. So they actually will mark the ball at the 24-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Two receivers split wide to the right this time. Oh. Now they're going to change their sides. Yeah, this so is this is the first time we've seen them split this many people out. Yeah, this is a Two to the left, one passing. to the right. Carr stands in the deep formation. They're going to snap it right away. Yeah, there, there had to be something fishy going yeah. on there. And now we we've got, three, got we got three flags going. <laughs> four of them. All four of them. <laughs> there was, nobody, nobody on the outside got to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> no. So we're, I know they were short at least one man on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and, and if somebody left early. You don't even have a choice if you want to take the penalty or not. It's, it's, it was called before the ball was even I think they're just snapped. trying to figure out which one yeah, should who, you call. Yeah, who, what number do I
So I'll let him decide. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. The whole offense. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody somebody was a little too far across. And so now they're going to try it again, it looks like. Two receivers split right white, the three main linemen down. They'll line up behind. That way they can go tackle heavy one way. The tackle goes heavy right side. They're going to take, snap the ball, hand it off to Carter, who just dives forward inside. And he is going to be cut down after a gain of three. Yeah, that's been their best running play. Just hand off to Carter. We've got, now we're going to bring Luft in, try to man the middle. Well, they're going to say you got six on well, He got back to the original line of scrimmage yeah. there, didn't he? Yeah. It's tough to see in behind all those big bodies. And he just so now it'll be second down and 10. Ball out on the 23-yard line. Carr oh. couldn't find anybody to hand it off with and is wrestled down. He'll pick up two because of the tackle carrying him yep. up the field. Let's see yeah. if we can't get you. Who got that tackle? Looks like, uh, again, that was uh, Parker Clucky in on another one. Yep. Big play here, obviously. Third and seven. And Thinking pass play, you got to make sure everybody knows who their man is. Backs out of the backfield. Those tend to have a tendency to cause defensive problems when you're man to man. So third down and seven. Oh. You can hear the crowd is in it. Glenn was going to have to take a timeout. Yep, clock, play clock was down to two. They will burn that timeout and talk it over. Timeout on the field. 14 14, 5 50 to play in the contest here at the Carroll Athletic Field. Between the Carroll Tigers and the Glenwood Rams. We're right back after this. <coughs> <coughs> facing a third and seven. Can the Tigers find a way to get off the field defensively and get the ball back after they just found a way to tie it up on their last possession? Glenwood comes out and huddles. The crowd is getting into it. They'll make some noise flashing on the scoreboard. And the noise shall be made. Here's a quick hitch out to the right side. We got a tackle the Tigers now. Tigers were there, yep. ready for it, and they'll bring him down. Oh, and a they're going to get a, flag on a the horse play. collar. Going to get him horse collar. From the official way in the back here. Yep. Or face mask, but one of the two. Gosh, dang. Every. You no, know, I, I think it's interesting. The line judge who watched the tackle didn't do anything. No. Nope. And they're going to maybe have him put it back in his pants. Uh, the, way, the way our guys are backing up. <clears throat> oh, wait and see here. On the, on the play, we have a personal foul, face mask, 15 yards on the defense. Penalized from the end of the run. First down. Jeez. Yeah, nice job. Figuring that, getting all over that. Quick screen out to the wide receiver, came up and made a nice tackle, and then uh, get caught with a hand on the face mask. That that's a tough break, but now you know, can't can't worry about that now. Now you got to come back and get a stop. Yep, can't control penalties. It's first and ten from the 41, and here's Carter up the middle trying to pull a man along, and he's going to pick up ten, and he's across the 50. Yeah, Coffin just hanging on to his jersey for dear life. So. Another new defensive tackle. Just now it's Nate Riling in there. You know, I guess uh, when you look at that penalty, the only issue I have is the three guys that were yeah. by the play didn't call it. It's the guy 15 yards away. Yeah, and Coach McCartan was in the, the lineman's ear on this side. So I'm sure he's saying the same thing. So it'll be first down and 10. Glenwood sprints to the line, hat, 
snaps the ball. Carr just sprints it out to the right side. Trying to sprint up the uh, sideline was Palmer, and he does so. Got to pick up about 11 and another first down on just a quick hitter. Yep, it's amazing how momentum can change on one one call like that. And now Glenwood feels pretty good and uh, opens some things up. Someone, someone needs to make a play for the Tiger defense. First and 10 from the 37 as Glenwood attacks. They'll go heavy to the right side of the formation, turn, pitch it to Carter. Carter's going to be tackled in the backfield. Parker Clucky. He almost fumbled it. Clucky almost pulled that out of yep. his hand. Nice job by Parker. Nice job by Parker. Two on the play. Parker Clucky went to state in wrestling last year, barely saw the field last year for the Tigers, a little bit of special teams, and uh, he made a point to talk to Coach Rowetter all summer about what he needed to do to get on the field, and Coach Rowetter talked to him about things he could work on, and he obviously did, and he's been having a pretty nice game tonight for his first varsity start. Second and 12, Carr takes the snap, hands to Carter. Carter's just going to pull a couple Tigers with him. He's going to pick up <clears throat> three yards on the play before he's brought down. Another big third down play. And that's Clucky coming back up off the bottom. Yep. Boy, this, this place is rocking <laughs> now, isn't it? Oh, the defense <laughs> cheers are going. Are we in a boat? You're going to have to take your motion sickness <laughs> if you come to one of these games and sit up here. Here's a handoff Carter again. He'll be piled up as the whole Tiger defense tries to strip that ball away. Yep. A game of four. Now an even bigger play. 16 carries for 95 yards for Carter. Four minutes to play in this contest. Glenwood with a fourth and about five. Again, watch the ball. Don't fall for the Carter hard leaves count. the field. Yeah, hard count here. Be ready. Carter walks off the field here on this fourth and five. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to go with a small group of guys. Up front, Carr in the shotgun, puts a man in motion, fakes the hand, oh, throws right. over the same middle. Same play. They had the same play open, yep. and nobody was home at the other end, and it'll fall incomplete, and execution <laughs> stops oh. the uh, Glenwood drive. Yep. And oh boy, oh boy, did the Tigers get lucky there. Yep. Now, can we take advantage of it? You've and got one, 331. One timeout left. One time out and the ball being placed at the 31 yard line. Yeah, Shuddy or Shuddy had gotten same play that they scored touchdown, not scored, but got the ball down inside the 10 the last time. See what they do is they heavy load the left side and put him in as a, yeah. a tight end, but, but, but man, he's right off of a guard and then he sneaks out. Yeah, man to man, somebody's responsible for that guy. Here's the snap oh. handoff to Johnson on the counter. He had a seam, but yep. he couldn't get by the big uh, glove of Nathan Vinton. Reached out and grabbed him and brought yeah. him down. Looked like he might have had something to the outside there if he could have got away. So that'll bring up second down and 10. You know, I understand fade routes are more for the end zone, but why not throw one here oh, towards midfield? I wouldn't be surprised. We got it. Use Isaiah Batings or, or Jang, their athleticism and size. There's a man in motion. That's Woolsey. Vincent turns, wants to throw oh. this one up. There's a lot of contact coming through, but it was incidental ruled. And incomplete, it will fall. Yeah, trying to get petted on the uh, little Coming off the out. inside and yep. kind of hitting more like the wheel on the outside there. And yeah. he just got his feet tied up with two defenders. Yeah, good. Baiting on a slant, and try to get his man to go with him and open the outside. So it'll be third and 10 for the Tigers from the 31. Jicklo wide to the left, baiting wide to the right. Woosley and Pettit as your slot backs. Johnson gonna step up, help cover. They're gonna try to throw this one deep to Jicklo and it is gonna be intercepted. As long deep. As he tackles him. And we've got a penalty mm -hmm. and he must have brought a knee down too then. Yeah, well, but why and a are, late flag. Why aren't they putting the ball back where he tackled him then? Well, we'll see what happens here. The officials trying to figure it out. You do have to remember, they're coming off of a winter break too. <laughs> yeah. It's taking them a lot longer though. To get they the just don't things. get as many practice games. Yeah, in these they cases. should be doing some scrimmages. So, what so we're going to have to wait and find out what actually happened here. 
or not. Pass interference on the offense Decline. is declined. So where are they going to spot the ball at? He was tackled back at the 30. They're going to put it at the 40. Yeah, but that's. I didn't see the pass interference on the offense because he caught the ball before Jicklow got there to yeah, catch him. Yeah, and, and like I said, Jang tackled him at the 30. If he wasn't down, they blew the whistle and stopped him when he got to the 40 from running any farther. But. The ball should have been spotted at the 30. Well, it's now up to the defense after the interception. Carr drops There's that back, play. the throw over the middle, and shoot, he's wide open again. Same play, same result. He's sprinting down the field. Jicklow will tackle him at the eight-yard line. A 52-yard hitter over the middle. Last time it went for 67. <sighs> Not I see Luke Woosley patting himself on the chest, uh, like telling guys, my fault, my fault. So I think Jang's got maybe wind knocked out of him or a cramp. Well, he's getting looked at by the trainers. Don't forget after the game, we've got our post game show brought to you by Mackey Motors in Lake City. Check out their all new quick lube station and find new roads and Mackey Motors in Lake City. Well, one play has really hurt him twice and yep. could have hurt him three times. Right. The same same player, same play. And, um, you know, and then I know as a linebacker, you're, you're thinking stop and run first, but you've got to be aware of who your man is. And if he's not blocking, you got to you got to watch him. If he's not blocking somebody, he's going off for a pass. You've got to be ready to cover him. Oh, now we need a big stand here. So, ball is on the nine-yard line. It is first and goal with 2.27 to play for Glenwood. Carter is back in the backfield. He's going to take the ball, dive forward inside the five. It's a pickup of four, and you have to guess it's going to be a steady dose of Mr. Noah Carter. Yep. You know, the other thing it does, it chews up time, so... If he does score, they're going to leave as little time as possible for the Tigers to, to try to answer downfield. Two minutes to play in the ball game. That looked like a false yep. start, and there's yep. a call. Yep. Boy, that guard was taken off early. Yep. This quick pace offense has gotten away with a couple of those tonight, but not yeah, this at that time. time. Yeah, it was a good time to get one of those. So that'll back him up five yards and bring back second and 10. So the coach called the quarterback over Carr, whispering and telling him what the play he wants run. A minute 53 on the clock. Carr goes under center, hands off to this time it is going to be Silvius, and he's going to sneak forward for what looks to be two yards. Glenwood's got two timeouts left, so they can. They look like they're happy to run this down and just see what they can do. Yeah, and then Tigers can't do anything with just one timeout. Yeah, and they might be content to run the ball if they don't score, kick a field goal. Eleven seconds on the play clock as they sprint to oh. the line. Hand off. Carter got a head start on this yes, one, he but did. he catches it and goes out to the five. Yeah. Now look over. It looks like they're bringing in the like two the new players. Yeah, eighteen is their kicker. You know, they're calling. Sure, they're going to run it down and call timeout. The play clock gets down. Carter came in. Has 18 carries and 101 yards and was not your starter yeah. on the offensive side. Yeah. Something changed. Yep. Yep. He's We're gonna change out a few of the big guys up front here. We're gonna give Mr. Gladden a chance to uh, see if he can't volleyball this one back. Unless they want the five yard penalty, they think it'd be better to kick. Well, they took it. They took the delay a game. Probably trying to get a better angle because yep. he's got to kick yep. it from that left hash. Right. See if the official says delay game or timeout. Yep, delay game. 
Now Fourth they're down. Gonna, now they're going to take a timeout or not? You know, it's interesting because the Tigers were thinking about trying to decline the penalty. Yeah. But. Two years ago in the playoff game, this was the difference at the game. So they'll set it. Backing up to kick it is Alec Nusser. The ball is going to be placed at the 22-yard line. It'll be a 32-yard field goal attempt. And it looks as though Good. it is through. On a 32-yard field goal, Glenwood takes the lead. 27. It was on the 17. Or 27. Yep. yep. Gosh. So two years ago, Glenwood playoffs beat Carroll by two points on a field goal. Last year, they beat Carroll by one point on a missed extra point. If this score holds up, they're going to win by three. So three, three wins by a total of six points. And I'll uh, come down to the kicking game. Well, we'll see what the Tigers got drawn up. They've got a chance. They got to have a fun play in the bag somewhere, Terry. Yeah, if they get, if they kick it high and short, you just call for a fair catch. That way, time no time runs off the clock, and you're going to get fairly decent field position. Remember, coming up after the game, we've got the Motor in Player of the Game, Motor in of Carroll, your Toyota, Chevy, and Buick dealership for sale, service, parts, and collision. That's Motor and Player of the Game. That'll be coming up right after the completion of this one. Terry will help me hash out which Tiger should take that home. If we kick it real short to these front three here, then we're going to get it between 35 and 40. So we'll see what Nusser does. He's going to put it back deep. Jicklow's going to take it at the 20. Going to tuck it away, looking for a seam. Now he cuts up the middle. He's going to be brought down at the 23. No, they'll say 24 yard 30, line. 34. So 18, 18 seconds on the clock for the Tigers. One timeout. You've yeah. got Jicklo. You've got Bating. Yep. And if you're a Glenwood defensive back, you've been taught in high school, pass interference is not yeah. where it occurs. It's just a 15 yards. yard. So if if you think you're, gonna, you're getting beat, just reach out and grab the guy and take the 15-yard penalty. And they got three guys 30 yards downfield here. Yep. So you, you Two know, of them middle linebackers now. Something short and run. Vincent takes the snap, trying to find. We've got a bunch of flags out. Jicklow catches on the sideline, steps out of bounds at the 48, but that's bad news as this coming back. Yeah. 12 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, holding. And there's been a lot of hankies in this one. Yep, two of them down in this one. So. Three. They're lined right up a row three. like a tic-tac-toe. Oh, no, yep, three. Yeah. <laughs> on the play, we have a hold. Number 66 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We play. So a hold on the uh, Tigers. So we could use... A guy who's listening from Minneapolis, Brad Christensen, <laughs> could use someone like him going out and making a spectacular catch and run and winning the game for us right here. It's dolphin time. Yes. Here's a snap for Vincent. He'll throw it across to Bating. Bating wants to get up the middle of the field. Take He's your last time out. Way. That's going to burn the last time out. Five seconds left on the clock as they pick up seven yards on the play. Mm, just Catch it and do a lot of lateraling. Let's get the band out there. Five <laughs> seconds to play. 17 <laughs> 14. Yeah, what are they doing? The pep band, pep sitting, band had a terrific job tonight. Yeah. The cheerleaders were out they, there. I mean, they, they what an one, atmosphere. We had a nice play. blue yeah. sky. The moon came out. A beautiful night to debut the new field here. And what a ball game we had as it's going to come down. To the last seconds here. Yeah. That's, that's the only bad thing. If we don't get miracle play here, we come out on the short end. Short end of a tough fought ball game. Yeah. 17 14, the clock reads. Five seconds to play. It's second and 15 with the ball on the Carroll 28 yard line. And, you know, you take a chance because it. 
game can't end on the def on a defensive penalty. So if you know, take a chance, maybe get a defensive pass interference call and live for another play. So there's three receivers to the left, one to the right. One to the right's Jicklo. Ooh. We've got a flag on the play, and that one's going to hit the ground. There's a second left on the clock, though. That guy up there is going to have a—he's going to have to ice his arm tonight because he. <laughs> you know these officials get reviewed too, and yeah. that review is going to go a little excessive, I think. <laughs> Watching Carter. On. We have an illegal formation. Offense, five yard penalty. Lead play, first down. Carter coming off the edge here. He's coming like. <laughs> I don't know that anybody actually knows no, what just went on. The, the whistle didn't. They snapped the ball before he blew the whistle for play, so. You just got to. You got to be ready to go because I think they have to just reset this thing yeah, right now. Yeah, and it's not going to start because. Unless they're going to call a false start on the center. It was, it was after a timeout, so the clock can't start till the ball is snapped. He's going he's to tell, put one second back on the clock and start it. Right the there. clock operator, please put one second on the clock. One. Thank you. So Vincent catches it, looks downfield. He's nah. going to be wrapped up. Just throws this one up, and it's almost picked off, but that is going to be the end of the game. Not quite what the Tigers had drawn up for the opening night in the new stadium as they will fall at home tonight, 17-14, to as Glenwood gets the W over the Tigers here in the season opener in what was a very, very hard-fought battle. Coming up...